The 65 yeah. and the yeah. are those in this packet? Yes. Yeah. Those are in the. These are not because. The 625 is not, the 79 is. I think we. Yes, I'd like one. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, this is <laughs> totally, totally new. Um, <laughs> Fred, hot, hot off. Uh, We're a little, a little discombobulated, I think, today. All right, I'm going to bring the meeting to order. Are we good? Okay. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to the Select Board meeting. Today is October 15th, 2019. We're being broadcast on Comcast Channel 22 and Verizon Channel 23. Today on the, uh, or excuse me, 33. Today on the agenda we'll have liaison reports followed by the town manager report and public comment. Uh, the agenda today has, we'll be approving a Select Board appointee to the Retirement Board to speak on a town meeting article. Uh, the town accountant will be providing the quarterly report. We'll discuss a tax title property. Uh, we have a hearing on the agenda to review the select board liquor policy changes, um, but we will be opening that hearing and then postponing it to a future date. We'll be sending up, signing a land purchase document, uh, approving the town manager goals and town manager annual review format. We'll be making a slight change to the select board policy regarding the number of members on HRAC. Uh, and voting on the November Town Warrant Articles. Uh, and last, we will discuss select board goals. So with that, let's have liaison reports. Uh, Anne, why don't you kick us off? Okay. Um, I attended last week uh, the Wakefield Board of Appeals hearing on the Tarrant Lane development, um, and the board did vote uh, to grant the comprehensive permit to Tarrant Lane uh, development pursuant to 40B, uh, 173 unit building, um, and uh, they may make slight changes to health and safety um, to the draft decision that they approved. Um, but so that that appears to be moving forward. Anything else? Uh, I think that that was my main. Okay. Mark. Um, two quick things. So. Uh, I attended with Bob the statewide municipal partnerships conference last week that was held out at Holy Cross, um, which was great. I got to meet some other uh, town managers, administrators, which was wonderful. But the presentation from the state was very interesting. They've um, launched a new website whose goal is to make it easy to find grants for different things. You can even get it set it up so it'll push out what things are going on. So when there's a new uh, grant opportunity, it'll push out, which sounded really interesting. Um, a particular interest to me was there was a discussion of um, older communities, and I met some interesting folks on that that I'll be able to follow up with for some other activities. So I thought it was a very worthwhile um, half day. This morning I attended, there was a meeting uh, DOT and town staff to discuss the road diets, and um, the gist of it was that DOT is in fact open to discussing the south side of town as well as the north side of town. Uh, timing would be uh, kind of spring summerish, kind of actually May June activities of next year, uh, with the goal of making sure that school is in session uh, when they'd be doing their measurement period, and they would do a test of about six to eight weeks of the diet. The diet would set up to one lane going each way, a center lane for turns, but also bike lanes uh, on either side of the road, on both sides of the road. Uh, the DOT folks seem very receptive to the whole discussion. Um, Julie did a great job coordinating the meeting and, and kind of guiding it and making sure that uh, the evaluation period would work well. There were a few outside folks. Rick Blodgett was there. Dave Talbot was there. Um, and there was a, a, obviously the uh, town staff was there. I thought the, the meeting was, was great. The DOT folks were very um, receptive. And there's a follow-up meeting next Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah kind of the next step to go to work on more of the details, more of the engineering staff from DOT will be in attendance as well. Great. I'll, I'll piggyback on that before I jump to Andy. Mm -hmm. um, I had actually reached out to the state a couple weeks ago, um, and they were very, to your point, very receptive um, of our interest in pursuing the trial. They did let me know that the temporary lanes will go in as they were pre before the repaving, which means four lanes, two in each direction, to get us through the winter and then come the spring, we can, after the discussions happen about the road diet, we'll see whether or not they end up getting paved with the diet itself. Sorry, yeah, if I could just add one more thing. Um, there was a lot of discussion about how and when to notify the community, and, and still TBD, but the notion of there'd be um, information that could go on the website. In fact, 
I think they said they'll do something. They'll build a website and yeah, send us a link. Yeah, which will be great. And then discussion of the folks that would be interested around March, which would still have pretty good lead, t lead time, but hopefully after snow and a good chance to meet with folks. Um, I also spoke with Jason Lewis and his staff, and they were supportive of the town in this as well. So thanks to Jason Lewis and his So is staff. The, uh, Jason's um, policy director. Right? Oh, Emily. Yeah. Emily was there, and Brad Jones attended as well. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Okay, great. And? So uh, I just wanted to bring attention to uh, three emails that we, we received in our packet, and just to check to see with whomever that they're being followed up on because as you know uh, we don't reply individually as a board except uh, Ann's acknowledgement right that we were Mark doesn't Mark does the acknowledgement. Oh Mark does it now. Sorry. Um, so uh, the first one was a couple of emails from residents about their concerns about ca cars idling too long specifically outside the train station um, where you get a lot of people coming off and going going by uh, when these cars have been idling for a long time. And another one about cars idling outside of Killam School for lengthy periods. And I know we have signs up around the schools um, about not idling, and I and they was hoping that we could um, enforce that in some way or, or, or um, get the message across to people that they need to turn off their engines because um, the ex the exposure to the car exhaust obviously for kids and adults is um, is a health health concern. Bob, do we have no idling signs outside train depot? No. So PTTF tackled the school issue and the schools are aware. We have not talked about the train station one yet. Can you stand under the back door here at one now with the Bob? I think it's still there. I'm not sure. Oh. The five-minute spot has, uh, five I think it has a sign. That has one. Yeah. Okay. Something for their consideration for next yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, the train station, the problem is people back in, including me, um, to pick up their right. whomever. And then there, there is this cloud develops of exhaust um, around that area. Um, and then um, there was a concern about cars parking on the sidewalk to drop off their kids at the Killam School and uh, concern uh, that there was some, this created some danger, dangerous conditions to parents and kids alike that are using the sidewalk. Um, finally, another one, uh, someone brought up, uh, again, the lighting of the, at the softball fields at Birch Minnow, safety issues, and uh, the softball teams don't have a place to practice, I guess, with, with lighting. Um, so I wanted to uh, uh, call attention to that. And then, I attend, just to let you know, I met with John Watson, the chair of, uh, Weston, sorry, uh, the chair of the CPDC to talk about uh, Airbnbs, the problem of Airbnbs. I won't get into the details now, but I'd be happy to, re to report on that. And lastly, today I went to a multi-town initiative on um, natural gas leaks um, with um, the, uh, it was both with many towns and uh, also with a, a number of people from National Grid, in, including their president. So. Um, so. Andy, I was, what, what, uh, what was the result of your conversation with Mr. Weston? What, what are the next steps there? Sure. So he, to, uh, I'll be. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, he said he he, uh, he sort of discussed that um, to sort of find out how pervasive the practice of buying a, a unit solely to use it as a uh, Airbnb, how pervasive that problem is. Uh, one idea would be to look at Burlington, who's put up uh, they put up a number of multi-unit uh, uh, housing. So just sort of decide, is it is it really a large problem in Reading that we want to, then if with that we want to regulate? And then as far as the regulation side of it, he thought that uh, this might be an issue better handled by 
the private sector than, than the government sector because if you think of it, if a resident buys a unit in one of these multi-residential complexes and next door they have um, someone who's bought a unit for an Airbnb, Airbnb purposes and there's a lot of in and out, people they don't know, um, their first recourse would be go to the building owner or the building manager and complain that, that um, about the conditions and that that perhaps this was a building manager or building owner's problem to be sorted out rather than the than town. Yeah. So, just some thoughts. Uh, any other questions on that? Um, yeah. uh, mind you, it's not on the agenda, so. We, if, if we want to discuss Airbnb more, we can put on it. Okay, I'm just hoping you're from the, from the liaison report. Um, and, and just, and, and also, I don't know if, if Bob wants to respond to the different the status of the different email responses that you mentioned, maybe during the town manager report, but you kind of raise up, you raise a number of things, but for us to close the loop on those. On the, oh, those on emails that so you John, made. Bob, can I ask you to just jump sure, in I, on those once you went I think I answered the two car idling, yes, the cars did. park at Killam. Yeah. We did discuss that at PTTF. Um, there are some small mitigation measures that we can take. Um, it's fairly steep in one point, but to actually put in granite curbing uh, would cause a far worse problem. It would move the cars further out into the street and be a lot more hazardous for the kids that are trying to cross the street and get out of a car. So that discouraging them from going closer to the off-road was not the best idea. Um, every, every elementary school has the same issue. It's not just killing. Um, the drop-off and pickup patterns are random, sometimes chaotic. Um, I will read something from Selectman Halsey that will address uh, the softball fields after okay. my report. Thank you. Uh, so my only other um, item to add is why to actually. So I did speak to the DOT. We had had some questions about the work that had been done behind Walnut Street, um, and now lighting is shining down into neighbors' yards. They had said they will look into that. Um, Bob said he hasn't heard anything, so if that no. continues to be the case, I'll reach back out. Okay. Um, but they said they did want to be good neighbors and they don't guarantee anything, but they'll definitely look into it. Um, and the other thing is John uh, is having regular uh, select board office hours at the Senior Center the second Tuesday of every month at 11 a.m. And that will start this month. I think, yeah, okay. okay. Well, quick comment on that. So um, I held office hours a couple of weeks ago at the library. Um, and it was advertised um, on the website, and I guess in social media as well. Um, and I had people lined up um, before I arrived. Really? <laughs> really? Um, yeah. So I thought it was it was quite good. And so you know, three people in total, just to be clear, wasn't you know, <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> three people more than we normally get for hours. Yeah. So yeah. I'll take that for a win. Uh, no pitchforks. Good. Uh, <laughs> All right. Great. So. Um, wonderful, and we hit agendas. We should probably schedule a few more office hours. Uh, all right, public comment. All right. Uh, so, if who would like to make? A co oh, yes, Bob. You want my report? Oh, did I skip you? Oh, I absolutely. <laughs> I can wait till Bill's. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Bill. Sorry. Let Bob go first. I don't want to go out. All right, I, I might answer your question, Bill. Yep, one never knows. The, never the list is long. <laughs> Um, I have a couple of short ones and a little bit longer of a one. Um, early this morning, Lieutenant Detective Abadi and I visited two liquor license establishments which finished off our work over almost a two-week period. Um, thanks certainly to Jackie and Caitlin, but also Aaron Schaefer and Matt Cornelis and various police officers was a team effort to go out there in a short amount of time. Um, we gave them the schedule of meetings now tonight. We did send them an email today that it would change. Um, from my personal experience, every license holder applauded you for the possible changes you were making in terms of having things on file at all times. They thought that was perfectly reasonable. They do that themselves. Mm -hmm. They just don't share it with us. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they're also very responsible about what, the, about what their liability is. Um, I have a reimagined Reading's survey, not an, not an answer or a result, but it was very nice. Uh, over 1,500 responses were received. Wow. So more on this, but um, that's an interesting uh, 
we call it a Venn diagram, whatever it is. It's, it's got a lot of interesting words, yes. word salad. Um, on October 4th, on a Friday, I went to a legislative breakfast uh, meeting in Linfield. Um, Representative Lewis sent an aide. Um, Representative Jones was there. The Senate had just finished the education bill the night before, so Jason wasn't able to come. It's a lot of discussion about the education bill, and let's just say there's two wide schools, if you will, of thought of what the impact on Reading is. Uh, one school is not very much, and one is maybe as much as two and a half percent a year, but nothing that's just outrageously good news, but you know, not, not too bad. Um, in terms of special education and circuit breaker funding, the news was very good for Reading. Um, it will be fully funded at least in the first year and hopefully thereafter, uh, which is a few hundred thousand dollars to the school budget, which is very helpful. Um, last week, we got an unexpected opportunity to one, be one of the four locations in the country where the EPA announced their new rules for lead and copper in the drinking water. I kicked off a press conference by stating that, quote, in order to be an efficient and effective smaller community, we in Reading believe that gathering all town and school departments together monthly to discuss routine matters puts us in the best position to handle emergencies well. When we heard the news that testing resulted in lead in the water at some locations in our schools, uh, myself, Dr. Doherty, and members from our facilities and public work staff gathered late on, turned out on a Friday night. Um, we didn't need to waste any time introducing each other or stepping each other's toes. Um, we just immediately set to solve the problem, and no one went home that night until we felt we had a good plan of action. Um, EPA Region 1 Administrator uh, De Dennis DeZeal said that, quote, Reading was chosen as a site for the press conference to recognize its role as a model of leadership for testing water in the schools and responding to drinking water issues, unquote. Uh, Mass Treasurer, State Treasurer Deb Goldberg said that she was very impressed with the reaction and that, quote, uh, Reading has hit it out of the park. So I just want to emphasize to the community that when safety of our students is in question, um, your staff in the town and the schools uh, get it right. And I'm very proud of the response and the fact that that's how we're set up, is to deal with things like this, just through doing routine work. Um, lastly, I just want to remind the board that you're posted tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for the financial forum in the library. That's all I have. Thanks. And is that at 7, not 7.30? Correct. Is that what we did? There's been some questions, yes. but yeah, FinCom wanted to meet a little earlier. Okay. Um, I can read the comment from Selectman Halsey. or wait for Mr. Brown. Why don't you go ahead? Okay, okay sorry, Bill. Okay. Um, this is board member comment John Halsey, October 15th. <clears throat> Since I am unable to participate in tonight's meeting, I thought it was important to share some thoughts regarding a citizen letter we all received late last week. A situation regarding safety and a current hazardous situation at the high school softball field at Birch Meadow was brought to our attention. His letter paid particular attention to both player benches and the outdated condition of the playing surface. Both of these situations are a valid concern. Of special note to me is the, quote, player protection, unquote, surrounding the player bench area in the field in question. I'm very familiar with this dangerous situation since, frankly, there is absolutely no player protection in the bench areas. The close proximity of the benches to home plate and the absence of any protective fencing or dugouts is extremely dangerous to players of all ages, in my opinion. This has been a concern of mine at many of our baseball and softball venues in town, and thankfully most of these situations have been re remedied by various parent and user league groups, strictly with private funding. Such an offer was made for this venue as well as, as well by the Reading Little League Softball League. They were discouraged to do anything since the unusually protracted, quote, Birch Meadow Committee, unquote, has still not finalized its recommendation for the entirety of the Birch Meadow complex. Accordingly, the League addressed a similar hazardous situation at Sturgis Park and created a nice facility, which I'm sure you've seen. Um, as a board, we're responsible for public safety of all citizens, regardless of age. Also, the parks, including their upkeep and condition. We're also responsible for protecting the town in these situations that cre create potential liability. A threat in all three of these areas of concern are present in the aforementioned situation at Birch Meadow. I feel strongly that we should take a lead as a board and fulfill our responsibilities in this situation before another softball season at this field commences. Costs to resolve this are manageable and I would argue that the monies in the Recreation Revolving Fund should be applied immediately to resolve the situation. Sharon can determine how, how valid that is. Um, these monies are earmarked for, for use first to cover the expense of programs and facilities that are incurred for rentals. 
Uh, only then should the balance of these funds be returned to the town's general fund. So just for the board's knowledge, this is a revolving fund, unlike some others at the schools, where at the end of a year, fiscal year, um, all but 10000 are returned to the general fund. 10000 is kept over to get the summer going and have some seed money for expenses. Um, <coughs> I don't remember recent years, but returning 100000 was not unusual for years uh, for the revolving fund. Uh, lastly, I have shared, this is John speaking, I have shared my thoughts with the chair in this matter during discussion of our agenda and my role as vice chair. I felt in the interest of closely observing open meeting laws and everyone's ability to represent their own thoughts, I have asked the town manager to read this to the board in my absence. I feel this is an urgent matter and delaying to our next meeting would not be in anyone's best interests. We have time and resources to solve this problem before winter weather would prevent the work. The spring conditions could easily not allow for a solution before the softball season starts for all the users of this field at Birch Meadow. Thank you for your attention. Respectfully submitted, John Halls. And we'll have to make sure that goes in the minutes. Bob, I actually spoke on, um, with the softball league about this very issue. Um, is it in the capital plan for, uh, for that fencing to be installed? Um, it's really hard to say because there's a million dollars in the capital plan for Birch Meadow Field improvements, but we don't know what that is. That's for the Recreation, Recreation Committee to determine. So I can't say what their thoughts or plans are. Okay. I don't, I just don't know. Um, I went to, I think their last meeting the subcommittee had, um, it's been a while, but I, I think the, the plan is fairly well shaped up and that they want to present it. I, as a liaison, I, I'd be happy to reach out to the Recreation Committee and um, if, if the, give them a sense of what the board is feeling when, when I get that sense. I mean, I understand John's, where John is coming from, but if the board uh, agrees with John's sentiments, I'd be happy to uh, work through the Recreation. Um, I, I've talked to them about their priorities as well last year. Since we're cold case thoughts. So maybe we can bring it up there next meeting and mention it to their chair for their discussion. Do, do, the, do the other select board members? Um, I would want to know what their, because there may be other safety issues. I don't mm -hmm. know what their priorities are. And yeah. so before. I can't speak for anybody else, but before we say this is a priority for us, yeah. I'd be curious to know what they're, because they have a more holistic view on what all of the needs are yes. for field space, for yes. other facilities. So, yeah. Well. Um, one fact I do know is that they're requesting uh, some funds at November Town Meeting to do some design work, so they're a ways off from some work or solutions, just so you know. Thanks. So, a couple of questions. One, um, I don't seem to be a copy of this note. It just came in at like no, not John's note, oh. the one he referred to. Yeah, we all received. Uh, it went to the board within the last day or two, so it's not in the packet because it didn't come in in time. I think it came in on yes. Thursday, and it was um, an attachment. Oh, I think it didn't it did make it in the did very it? last. Yes, week. it's in the packet. You must have really. It was right at the end of the day. I know. Yes, very last page of your packet. The last. Um, Correspond. All right. So. Um, I think I should continue. So um, I'm. So this is a hard one. It, it feels like we're. Um, it might be good to have the rec committee spending some time with us and having a discussion in a public meeting because mm -hmm. there seem to be a number of issues that demand attention that aren't right. getting addressed. Not the least of which, I mean, we have some things that are on future agendas. We had the discussion when they came into the meeting a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I'm hesitant to kind of select A and, and not B and C. It seems like we have a bunch of issues that we should work through with them. So let's table this and for the end of the meeting where we talk about future agendas. Now we can decide how to proceed. All right. Great. Vanessa. Um, I'm not killing you. It's okay. Uh, it, uh, this is it's still only 4:30. This, this is just a brief. It's only 4:30. This is just a brief um, question for that came up when I was reading the minutes for October 27th. Um, I was reminded that two restaurants recently received li liquor violations for serving minors. 
Um, my question is, did they, did one of the, one or both um, violate our policy, like, like um, the liquor store that we is recently that the one we had the meeting here about, about, or is it something? No, this is about the, the state. Right? The, the ABC state. Okay. Them, so okay. you have to read the state's report. To Andy's point. Yeah, we, we are not allowed, when the ABC conducts a field operation and, and find a violation, mm -hmm. we are not allowed to pile onto that, if you will. We are not. No. So they will adjudicate that. They will send us the results. All right, okay. thanks. Yep. Okay. Yeah, stop. <laughs> yeah, quick. Uh, actually, related question, just so we're not allowed to pile on. Let, let's suppose that they determined there was a violation mm -hmm. of of, uh, of state policy, I guess. Mm -hmm. They report that to us. And then let's suppose that we find in a separate incidence that there is a violation of our policies. Yes. Um, you, you are allowed to count that as a second offense. Thank you. Yep. That was exactly the question. If you can take question. into consideration the state's findings at your yearly renewals, mm -hmm. um, oh. you just can't give them a punishment based on the state's Violation, but at the end of the year, you can you're allowed to say that oh, you did have a violation, even though it's from the state. Thank you, uh, Bob. For those that have any violations, do Thanks. we do you provide a report to us? Because I remember last year this was a pretty straightforward process, but this year we seem to have people um, behaving badly. Uh, from what I've seen, they've slightly changed in how they notify us because they had made some errors before with the wrong address and wrong establishments. Um, from, from what I've seen, we don't hear until they're finished now, and they've issued a penalty of some sort or a finding of some sort. And is that provided to the town? And then yes. do you then provide that to us? Yes. Okay. And it takes usually many months. Sounds about right. All right. Now are we done? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on to public comment. Um, please raise your hand, provide your name and address. <laughs> Hi, Bill. Um, Please keep comments uh, t to topics under the purview of the board. Please no derogatory or campaign related comments. Um, all right, Bill. I, I hope I'm never derogatory. Sometimes I'm not free. So, uh, I remind the board that uh, last year we had an instructional motion by town meeting to, to report on Memorial Park. Uh, I think we spend an excessive amount of time trying to circumvent the charter on the Human Rights Advisory Board that they're trying to put together. And I'm concerned about the amount of money that they've been spent uh, trying to serve that the job. Um, I think the other thing too, and you say within your jurisdiction, we spend an awful lot of time hearing complaints on body Bs and body Rs, which are not under your jurisdiction, from the, the CPD or the government of the field. Um, you, in my opinion, you push yourself on to the police station, police chief's selection board, which is not in your jurisdiction by charter. And I think, uh, and I strongly suggest that uh, you might want to get back on track and do your job and as it should be by charter and stay away from the trying to be nice to people at party meetings and all other stuff. That's my comment. Nothing personal to join you. Uh, my observation is 50 years. And, and uh, I'm hearing a lot of grumbling in the background, and I won't tell you because I will not get that sauce to tell okay. you. Thank you, Bill. Just, just a little advice. I, I told you I'd take you to Woodshed if you get that. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, since there's no other public comment, um, we will move on to the first agenda item, which is. Uh, we need to approve a select board appointee to the retirement board. Well, yeah, um, a couple meetings ago, Sharon uh, filed a form that she asked you to approve. Uh, now Carol Roberts has filed the same form for a slightly different reason. Um, Sharon as an employee of yours, and then Carol as an appointee of yours, but same end result. And this so is again to in order to fully participate in uh, discussions with FinCom, which may be largely done now by town meeting, which is in the future. So, um, Mark, is that? Uh, I don't motion. see the prop the motion for that. Oh, well, is it move to accept the filing by Carol Roberts? Let me get it up on the uh, overhead here. So 
a move to approve the uh, form 268A, section 19, as filed by Carol Roberts. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have Sharon Engstrom with our uh, town accountant quarterly report. When I get to like the the news reports, I might want to refer to them there. Yep. Okay. So hopefully, I won't take up too much of your time. <laughs> I get a lot in the packet though. Um, so I figured I would start off and, and talk about um, the fiscal 19 close and where we are with the reporting um, of that year. And then I'll go into where we are for the fiscal 20 as of September 30th. And at the end of your packet, or at the end of my um, section of your packet, is the declaration of trust for the OPEB. And I'll go into that. So first off, um, we closed fiscal 19 on September 6th. That is our typical timeline. We try and keep it open as long as possible because for whatever reason, we get a lot of late bills and we want to have proper cutoff. Um, so that's when we typically close, so we were pretty much on time with our, our standard. Um, once we're done with that, um, I move right into working on the end of year report for the school. So there's a lot of expenses that are paid on the town side that are allocated to the schools for the end of year report, and that is due by September 30th, so that is top priority. As soon as I'm done closing the year, I start working on that report. And then once I'm done with that, I start working on free cash. So I worked um, with my assistant town accountant, trying to get her involved in every aspect of this year and close, get her at least familiar. She probably won't be able to do it all herself because it's only done once a year, but just get her um, feeling familiar with where all the documents are kept, where the, what are the reports we're running, and there's quite a bit. It's very involved. Um, we did submit to DOR and are expecting our certification within the next 10 days. So hopefully we'll get our final number. I don't like to quote the number because sometimes DOR will have some different views and deduct things for things maybe I wouldn't have deducted. So I usually like to wait, get a final number so as not to confuse anyone. Um, so we are on in tr online to have our, t our free cash certified in time for November town meeting so that won't be an issue to use it. After that, we've started working on, Andrea and myself are working on salary projections to help um, the department's heads build their budgets for fiscal 21. Andrea is primarily working on it right now. I'm working on other things and then we'll get together and review together. So that's another thing that happens at year end. So there's always that fiscal 19 close, fiscal 20 is open and we're budgeting for fiscal 21. So there's almost always a lot going on. Once I'm done with that, I will be um, focused on the tax recap that's setting the tax rate for, for fiscal 20. Um, I can't really complete that process until November town meeting has happened because the votes of town meeting are included for November. Um, so we can't get it certified until after town meeting is closed in so many days before the certified articles are released to me. I have to have those articles to get it set. So it's usually sometime around the end of November um, closer to the end of November that you'll see the tax rate set. Of course, Victor is always well ahead of me. He's got all his time done. He is all set to go. He's waiting for me to get all those numbers in there. We work together on that process. We make sure our numbers tie, and then we submit, and the tax rate is set. So that's where we're at now. And then the last part of the process um, for end-of-year reporting is the Schedule A, and that is the document we submit to DOR. They use that to compare communities and their financial status. So a lot of times when you see documents that actually compare different communities, their revenues, all their different um, data, they, they get that from the schedule, schedule A. And so we have to submit that by November 30th. If you delay too long in putting that in, they can hold up your state aid. So you never want to be too late on that. <laughs> so we try and meet that de deadline. Usually they wouldn't do it unless they didn't have it by January, but I don't like to test them. I try and get it in on time. Again, I will involve the assistant town accountant in all these processes because they are once a year. She will only see them once a year, and I just want her to have um, familiarity that somebody else knows how to do these documents, what reports need to be run, and all of that. So that being said, um, the other thing that goes on at this time of year is the year-end audit, so fiscal 19 on September 
10th, the auditors were out to start their preliminary audit work. They spent three days with us. I expect that we will see them sometime in the beginning of November to wrap up field work. And then hopefully we'll get our reports sooner than later. I feel like they've gotten very, very busy. I think we're all on the same kind of timeline. And I feel like we get our audited financials just in time to do our continued disclosure. And it's, I think that they're working on several audits all at once. So it's one of those, I feel like we're seeing the, the statements come out later than we used to. I'm not sure why, but hopefully they'll be done sometime in November. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Other than that, I think that's pretty much everything for fiscal 19. In your packet, I think it's on the first 12 pages, on page starting at 12, page 12, so I'm going to, well, quite a bit here. It's on page 12. One more. Mm. Here it is. And boy, is it small. <laughs> you can do the plus there. Use the plus. To the right. Okay. It makes it hard to see what's on the other side, though. Move this over a little. I find this very difficult to see on the screen. I think you can get rid of that sidebar. Oh, yeah, you're right. That yeah. should go. That helps. Let's go. Okay. That gives you at least the names of the categories and um, some idea of the percentages. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll move over as I have to, but essentially um, this is a summary of the general funds revenues in summary format so by categories I um, mean what I usually do when I'm looking at this is just look at where we are um, currently um, for our, our collections and where we were at the same time last year so this report gives you last year's revised budget and this year's current budget and then it also gives you what your collections are and it can help point out to you an area where things look a little strange you can see our revenues are about 24%, 24.44%, and last year they were 24.89%, pretty much in line. I'd expect them to be somewhere in that area. You know, one quarter ended around 25%, so it's pretty much in line with my expectations. So it didn't draw any um, immediate attention for me um, in terms of um, appropriateness. But I always tend to start here looking at revenues, making sure that they're not lagging too far behind. We never want to have a revenue deficit because we have a balanced budget. We don't want to not get the budget that of the revenue that we. We don't want to get not get the revenue that we budgeted because we are balanced. Sharon. Yep. Um, if I may, um, the fee line here under it goes payment lieu of tax and then fees. Mm -hmm. Are those the? This goes back to a discussion the board was having earlier. Are those fees? Do those fees? Are they? Do they include the? Um, Parking permit down by the depot, mm -hmm. paying payment of those, and and we were, I think we asked for um, the, the last year of data. Um, That'll be included when we have the depot discussion. Yeah, I think I yeah, added it to you. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize you wanted it tonight. I would have brought it, but no, no, no that's we're gonna separate question on the um, interest uh, earnings on investments. You think we're gonna be able to hit the 450? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah? I, feel like it's, um, I feel like we've been seeing that we're getting higher returns on our money um, for the last couple of years and DOR won't just let you bump up to what actual was from the prior year. You can only go up up to maybe 8% before they start asking questions and make you prove a trend before they'll allow you to. So you have to be careful about what you budget, um, especially in, in, in that area because interest rates can go in, up and down. They don't want you to be overly optimistic about what that number is. but. You know, it is a number that the last couple of years has been producing a lot of regeneration for us, um, which is helpful, but at the same time, DOR does put a cap on how high you can make that projection be from year to year. They don't want to see you increasing things 10, 20 percent. That's not going to go over with them. They want to prove it. But you feel um, good we're going to hit or exceed that budget number? The full yes. Budget. Great. Yep, definitely. Under other financing sources, the third item down, other funding sources? Yes. Um, why the significant difference between what was collected to date versus last year versus this year? So that number there is the actual um, earnings distribution for our MLD. Um, and so it's probably just an issue of timing of when we collect their first payment. Um, 
So that's that number essentially there. There's something else there, an error that I found in terms of uh, money being, you know, coming back in from the library. So I think I, I had moved money into the library twice, that library project. I recorded something twice and I had to reverse it. And so that 230 that you see actually has to do with that mistake that I made. And it looks to me that that, that first payment was not made on time last year. And so that would be the reason that that looks so good. Mm -hmm. So the next, um, and this is probably not as helpful to look at it this way, but the next is your water. Um, this is more detailed than the general fund. Um, and this is essentially um, your revenues. And we're looking at the same sort of thing. You've got your last year revised budget and your current year budget, and then what are we, where are we at as of September 30th. So last year we were at 25.91%, and now this year we're only at 23.9%. The reason I'm not overly concerned with that is the collections that they make from July, August, and September are at the old water and sewer rates. And so those water and sewer rates will be built up at the higher number for the next billing cycle, and so I expect that to catch us up. So I'm not overly concerned, and that would be the reason why. That's water. The next one is sewer, same report, same, same thought processes, looking at where are we at. And for sewer, We essentially were at 26.54% of budget, and this year 23.3, same philosophy. We actually do have an increase in our sewer rates, and those have not started to be um, built out yet or collected at that rate yet, so that's going to cause a little bit of a lag in that first quarter when you're looking at it. Stormwater is the opposite. In stormwater, we had 20.45% um, last year and 29.99%. If you recall, last year we increased the sewer, um, the stormwater rate. It was like from 40 to $60. Um, and so last year you had the opposite issue where, or the same issue was going on last year. That new rate hadn't been shown on that first quarter. And then the, net, the remainder there, they get the extra. Now you're seeing that at the higher rate. So that looks fine to me. Then when we move to the year-to-date budget reports, these are actually salary, um, sorry, expense reports. Let's see if I can see them here. It's so hard to see on here. Sorry about this. So the way I ran this report for your packet is in summary format, just so I could show you all the departments and show you the different categories to resemble most the way the budget is actually approved. So we do salary and expense for each department, and then capital is done separately. So this is the best way to show it to you without showing you hundreds of pages. I would look at it at a more detailed view, but this is the best way I could show it to you. So on this report, when you're looking at it, it shows your original appropriated budget. That is the budget that we approve at April Town Meeting. When you see transfers and adjustments in that column, at this point, all that's there is um, encumbrances being brought forward from the prior year. So that's money that was encumbered at the end of the year and brought forward as prior year funds. So that goes into your transfer in, and then the two added together is your revised budget. That transfer in column would also be used for any changes that we make at November town meeting. So if we adjust the budget, you'd see those changes happening in that transfer in column. And then the year-to-date expended are actual invoices that have come in or actual expenses that we've um, incurred encumbrances are, are being held until the actual invoice comes in. It's a PO, so to speak. So looking at this, the first thing I tend to do is look at the salaries because they tend to be uniformly spent kind of equally throughout the year. And so I usually will um, fan through and make sure that they're at 25% or less. In doing that, I did not find any of the departments to be close to that 25%, so I wasn't overly concerned. With expenses, however, they're not typically uniformly spent, and so that's a harder. But I do tend to look closer at the higher percentages. So in the administrative services area, you see 52.7% for expenses. When I investigate that further, I look and see that in that category is property insurance, property and casualty insurance, which is a large expense item in administrative services, and we pay it in the beginning of the year for a 3% discount, we pay the whole thing. And so that's why that percentage looks so high. It's one of our larger items. Um, and most other items seem to be kind of where I would expect when I drilled in. I did not find anything that kind of drew my attention negatively. 
Um, capital tends to be an area where you should see probably high percentages because those are your larger um, purchases or projects. And so we tend to do a PO and hold that money as soon as we assign it. So if we pick a vendor to buy a car, we encumber it. <laughs> if we are starting a project and we do an RFP and we've picked a contractor, as soon as we sign that contract, we encumber it. So to see a high percentage for capital, not usually a problem. In fact, I prefer to see that. It means that they've addressed the money. <laughs> Sharon, for public safety, I know overtime has always been a question. How is that looking so far? It's hard to say. I mean, I think it's going, I think overtime is one of those things where just in the beginning of the year, it's hard to say because we actually have a lot of things going on and then as positions get filled, the overtime could trickle down. But it is an area always of concern. Um, but because their overall salaries is not going towards that 25%, I wasn't overly concerned with it. Because open positions sometimes do create extra overtime, but you've got savings on other salary lines to cover. Question on the school side? Yeah. Um, the salaries there are uh, not toward your 25% at all yet. Is that yeah, that would require me to dig deeper um, with... Um, are they less? They're at 9.7 Yeah, their, their fiscal year sort of starts with the school year. So they oh, you're right, yeah. They have a lot yeah. of money, as we have since July 1st. Got it. Their, te their, their biggest expense is their teachers who start in September, so I guess, yeah, that would make perfect sense. Cool. Sharon? So, the, I just noticed the expenses for public safety <laughs> and... Um, uh, for public safety is, is pretty high. Can is that, that up on the same reason that um, what you exchange, what you explained about the encumbrances, that there, um, these are expenses that are contracted out or something, and that you you take so on. So their overall, they're, yeah, there there could be some of that, but their overall. Um, Budget for um, I don't know if it's here 132. They've encumbered. The encumbrance is probably cars, police cars. Yes, their cars are part, aren't part of their capital, but part of their expenses. They actually oh, are purchasing cars. Yeah. So it's the same. And you notice they're in the encumbrance. So usually what happens is once they order the car, they encumber it, and then we're waiting on an invoice. So it either will be in the expense column or the encumbrance, depending on where we are um, in that purchase. And that is kind of an odd thing. You think a car is kind of a capital item, but it is in their expenses. So okay. if that makes sense. Thanks. I did actually um, speak to their admins because they were a little confused about um, some POs that were still open. So we did look at their um, expenses pretty extensively and noticed that they were putting a couple things in the wrong spaces. And so it looked like their percentages in certain categories looked a little off, and it was that they used the wrong account number. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of errors made just because we have some new administrative staff and they're not as familiar with where am I supposed to charge this? And then it makes the budget look a little funny. So, okay. That being said, not other, a lot of things drew my attention um, in this area, but I figured I would um, provide it in your packet so you could review it, and obviously you can ask questions as you see. In the um, water and sewer, I do the same exercise. I look at their salary and wages, and all of them are with seem to be in line. Stormwater seems like it's low, but I think we have an open position there, so that explains that. Um, and then again, capital should be kind of high. They tend to act on those things pretty quickly, especially if they have something um, to um, purchase. Like I know that the sewer, water and sewer, like they had a backhoe. I kind of kept track. Water has a dump truck fully encumbered. They have some um, water booster station technology expensed, and then the rest of it encumbered. So they really try and get working on the capital piece very quickly, and I, I appreciate that because we don't want to be chasing our tails at the end. So essentially, the biggest things I looked at when I was looking at water, sewer, and stormwater was their capital, their percentages, making sure everything looked to be encumbered and in the right spot. Um, none of the expenses rose to any um, level where I considered to be um, excessive at this point. And so I figured I would provide the report, but it's kind of still early in the year. It's not at a point where you'd ever kind of say, well, we're definitely trending too high and we're going to need money. The first quarter tends not to be that quarter where I'm looking at it and seeing a lot of that. 
maybe if I saw salaries trending above the 25 percent I'd be concerned um, but salaries I mean expenses tend to be spread kind of up and down not as uniformly um, and so people are watching them we all are watching them and also in Munis um, when they go to encumber if there's not enough money it's going to stop them they're not going to allow it so it kind of protects them from overspending so that that information is not presented in here the water sewer it is in the packet so I just didn't scroll far enough down on this because this is kind of hard it's, to read. Is it below? So right after the general fund. So this is all um, the general fund, which is several pages. And then uh -huh. when you get to water and sewer, they're all on like one page. So salaries for water, 21.7%. Oh, I got it. Yep, 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 yep. And so the higher percentage that draw your attention is all capital, which is what I would expect. Um, right. And then when I looked into them, I could see that there were all things I expected to already have started. So. So that's the extent of the fiscal 20 review. There isn't a lot going on. That first quarter doesn't tend to have a lot that draws my interest, um, but we do look at it. Yeah. The last um, item I want to discuss with you is the declaration of trust document that is in your packet. Mm -hmm. Let me get to my page of my notes where we talk about that. So in this trust document, um, well, essentially, first off, let me just say that um, we um, we have intent on we have actually have an OPEB trust that we created at town meeting based on accepting Chapter 32B Section 20, and we ne we needed the trust document to be able to to even entertain the idea of um, investing with the state. Um, it's the state retirement. Yeah, well, it's print, but it's basically through the state. So it's the state retirees benefits trust fund. And in order to actually be able to apply to invest your money there, they needed a physical trust document. Um, and there was a lot of unclear um, portions of the legislation prior, and they didn't seem to be requiring in the other legislation that, that we had accepted prior a physical trust document, but absolutely wanted, um, or the State Retirement Board absolutely wanted this trust document. So Ray Mieres has drawn this up for us, and it basically um, outlines um, who the trustee would be, and that would be um, our treasurer, Andrew. He's also the custodian. It actually states in the document that we are allowed to invest this money with the State Retirement Board. Um, so it, it gives us that investment right. Sure. It also states within the document, yep. I'm sorry, we can or we have to? We can. We, we can. We, can. we okay. don't have to, but it gives you that permission to do so. And. When I get into it at the end, um, I will tell you the steps to doing the investment and where we are in that process. Um, it also um, does not require us to make any specific um, payments towards the OPEB trust. We do, as part of our budget, budget money in there, but it doesn't require us in this document any specific amount to go in. It is irrevocable in that the money will not revert back to the town unless that, that liability is fully defeased. Um, which I don't see that happening anytime soon. So it's just important to understand that this is an irrevocable. But we did create this trust years ago. It just legislation was updated and made more clear. And now we finally know what the trust document is supposed to look like. We have a trust document, and now we can proceed to get this money invested at a better interest rate. Because right now, we're limited in what Entry can invest it in. He's got it at M MMDT or um, CDARS, and we're only getting small small percentage rates in, in PRIT, we would actually be able to invest this money with the pension funds and get better returns. So, Sharon, before you we go further into this document, um, can you provide a little bit of background as far as the creation of the trust, the purpose it serves, et cetera, sort of a trust fund 101, if you would. The purpose of the trust and why we need the document? Uh, not why we need the document. No, no, um, is. Just the, the, oh, trust itself, the trust itself, what we've done with it today. So the purpose of the trust is to create a vehicle to invest in the OPEB or designated for OPEB um, liability. And that is a growing liability that we've had. Um, and, and so we created that to have a trust fund that we could put the money in and start investing towards that liability. And that was done back in, I want to say originally in 2013, we accepted that section of the law and it created a trust, but we didn't have a trust document, nor did we even have guidance on 
who are the board of trustees for this? How does this even get created? We had a lot of unanswered questions and we just struggled. How are we supposed to do this? We actually met with Paul Tedesco over at Pritt, who um, gave us a lot of guidance about how this is done. And he, he highlighted to us that there were a lot of concerns because it didn't require a written trust document and they really wanted one. <laughs> and so they really wanted people to hold off until they could get a trust document and there was very little guidance on who are the trustees supposed to be? What's the formulation of this? And so that kind of put a, a monkey wrench in it for quite a while. Um, and so we've been investing those funds in you know very low risk MMDT, you know, money market, CDs and getting very little return when we can invest now if we do this with print and get you know seven and a half to nine percent you know is what they like average but there are definitely years that's down and up but certainly more than what we're getting at a money market <laughs> um, and so April of 2017 we reaccepted the section of the law once the legislation had updated it and made it more clear a lot of the gray areas particularly the trust and how that's supposed to be laid out and then Ray Mears' office actually drew up this document. And the, the easiest form, I would imagine, is to make the treasurer the trustee. I don't know if there were other options, but that's what they elected. And it seems like that would be the best path forward, the fastest way to put this together so that we can begin investing with the state. The state meets like four or five times a year, and they're meeting again in December. The only thing I'm not sure of, if you execute this trust document, it takes 90 days for it to become an effect from the date that you execute it. So I don't know if we have to wait that 90 days before we can apply to invest with them or if we can start the process and then they'll let us invest after our 90 days is up. This is fully executed, as they say. Um, is investing with them, so first, is there currently funding in this trust? Yes. So as part of our annual budget, we put in about, in the general fund, about 500000 is what we started with. I think we're up to like 600000 for the general fund. The enterprise funds are fully funding their annual required. So just like the pension trust fund, uh, we have an actuarial evaluation that tells us how big is this liability. And then they give you a funding schedule. We have not been able to fully fund our annual required contribution to fund it in a 30-year period. So every, time, every two years they come out and they do it and they give us a new 30-year schedule at least for the general fund. But the enterprise funds, the numbers are more reasonable and we're able to do it, and that one's going to be fully funded around the time our pension is for the enterprise fund, so that would be your water, sewer, and stormwater. But the general fund is just too large, and with the pension liability being you know, still out there, there's nowhere to get the kind of money we'd need to do the OPEP. So the hope is that once that's fully funded in 2029, we would redirect funding to try and really you know, chip away at what we really are supposed to be putting in towards OPEB, which is like a $67 million liability. So it's a big one. So we wanted, we've been, we've been putting money aside when others have not. So it's been viewed very positively by, you know, bond rating agencies, by our auditors, but still very small amount compared to what the liability is. So is just for before we go down the rabbit hole of looking at this like the legal document, um, is the ask here that we approve this tonight? It would be nice if you could, um, but if you wanted to think about it, we could obviously come back and execute it at a later date. But it would also delay us in our process of applying to invest with the state. Mm -hmm. um, can I just get a feel of the board of how, are we comfortable with this? Do we have a lot of questions? I have two questions. So, um, Article 12, 12.1 um, actually says we shall invest in SRBTF. It doesn't say we may. So I don't know if that's an oversight or if that's what it's supposed to be. 12.1, uh, shall invest and reinvest in the SRBTF. I don't know if it's an uh, oversight or if that's, they do know that that is our intent. Yeah. Shall invest. It, I'm just concerned because this document is irrevocable and it also says things that aren't in here aren't, aren't to be considered. So, mm -hmm. make sure that well, And we already learned that shall has 31 meetings. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's avoid that again. <laughs> can I say something? So, um, the other option, the reason that they do that is right now you have all the money uh, invested through the legalist. And the legalist is bank account, CDs, that are no money market. Outside of that legal list, you can't invest. 
so the treasurer can invest only inside of that legal list. Right. The highest return on that legal list is 2%. So that's why they say shall invest, if you invested in there, it opens up the door to earn an average of 7.5%. That, that investment trust that they have, it's invested in, in the open market as they as by their uh, allocations and it earns an average of 7.5%. It, it does have years where it had 11% return, years yeah. that it was lower than that, but it's, it's way, you're definitely going to make more than investing with the CDs and money market. Keep in mind, if the economy goes down, the money market will go up to 0.05%, okay. basically not doing any money at all. Yeah, it's the, that's why I think they put that in there, because there is no other option we either invest it in the legal list or with them. With them, we get people to earn more money. Okay. So there are only those two options. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and this is the better. The other thing when I say is that I want to mention with the OPEP, it's not mandated. But if something changes in the future and they mandate it, that liability is so huge that we want to do the most that we can. We're lucky enough because we're planning for it. But if the law changes and they start saying, okay, from now on, you're going to have to plan for it, you're kind of ahead of the curve and ahead of everybody else because we already have lowered the liability by investing in a, in a trust that earns money for you. Yeah, as the money earns money, that kind of, you know, that, yeah. that helps to face yeah. the liability as well. Yeah. So you well, really want to get the most. He, no, he's so under he interest. Okay. Okay. One other question. Article 11, annual reports. So would the trust be reviewed by the auditor? Oh, you mean in terms the of the audit? Yes. They already do look at it. It's part of our, it's part of our, um, our audit. They look at it as our fiduciary <coughs> trusts. So I guess this is a question for Ray. Does the writing of 11.1 .1 account for that? The trustee shall furnish to the town annually or more frequently to the town's and then it's got this MGL 32B section 20, which I have no idea. Is, it, is that what town meeting accepted? It sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. that yeah, that's question. Mass General Law Chapter 32B section 20. That is the section of the law we accepted to create the trust. And does that allow for and require that it's part of the audit? Well, because it's on our books, it's a trust fund that sits on our books. All of it gets audited. Okay, and do we need to? change anything in 11 or is 11 as written okay because 11 says that there's going to be a, an annual report and I just want to know that well currently we haven't had any um, requirements to re provide anything because we didn't have a trust document but this would actually be coming from the trustee so this would be your treasurer providing an annual report on the status of the fund I think the question is do we want to make a wrong mark but do we want to make the audit part of this document so that it's a required action oh. as opposed to optional because if it's not in this then it's, it's certainly it's not, not optional because it's part of our our general mm -hmm. ledger i mean it gets included it regardless be. Okay. it's it's funds that we're holding and so all of it gets included in the audit i don't know if it needs to say it but that's but could it be omitted i think is where we're going I can't see why only, only by error uh, the auditing on, on the app yeah on the auditors part but it's it's always looked at every year so I believe what they're referring to is the um, so the trust is invested it's kind of allocation and if there is sales um, so if there is buys and sales that happen within the trust they will actually it's like a state it's right like bank state I think that's what they're referring to that the trust he has to at least provide to the select board an annual report that shows all of the money movement of the fund, where they get invested, if there is money that gets invested with pre quarterly, for example, you want to see it in that report. It's just like an annual statement that will, will show all the buys and the sales that happen within and, and that's actually done by PRIC. Those are the statements. But yeah, I know PRIC comes out um, for the pension trust fund. I would imagine if we were doing it through OPEB, they come out and make a presentation every year. Um, to, right now, it's to the retirement board. For OPEB, it would be the select board. And they would go over their performance and you know their asset allocation and how it's selected. They give you a little understanding about um, how they how they 
devise their asset um, allocation, what the performance is on the individual types of investments that they have, what the percentages are, where, where the money lies, and all of that. They do that every year, a couple times a year, actually, at the retirement board. So I would, I would guess that they would come out and do that here, or is Andrea, as the trustee, would be required to do it, yeah. So I, it sounds to me like we've got a few questions that we may need Ray to clarify. Is that accurate? Mm. The only one that I've heard that I feel like we need Ray to clarify is the, the did we mean shall? The shall, yeah. <laughs> um, the one question um, that I do have that I think Sharon would be able to answer um, most likely is um, so there's there's our trust fund and then we'd be in the, the, would the goal be, I'm just, uh, the interaction between our trust fund, the state retirement, uh, s excuse me, this, um, are you looking to find out if the, yeah, if it is the money cash yeah, separately? And then the print fund. So like, is, is it our trust fund then goes into the SRBTF, which goes in, which is then managed by print? How is that, how are to those? It's, it's. From what I understand, uh -huh. it goes in and is retired un under the state, but we are kept separate. Our funds are kept separate, so we receive a statement that's separate, much like what we s receive now from PRIT for our pension. Um, it's just a vehicle for us to allow us to actually invest in PRIT, which we the, have had the prior. state retiree benefits trust fund is the vehicle that allows us. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the, that's how I understand mm -hmm. it. Maybe Ray would have a different take, but I, I absolutely think that that's the only involvement they have because they don't commingle our funds. They keep everything separate, and and that's the the way the pension one works as well. Uh, I I think if you're concerned about shell, there's no rush here. But I I think that one distinction is the shell means you have to go into this entity of the state. But it doesn't give the state the right to invest the funds. Andre has that right. It gives him then the opportunity to choose how to invest within that framework. So it's not that you're ceding control in any sense away from the treasurer, Where's but it's, a, it's allowing the treasurer. Twelve point one. So, for instance, I assume Andre that you know if they give you permission in January, you can decide how to enter the markets. Correct. You wouldn't. Well, you you can decide. I won't even tell you. <laughs> Trustee yeah, it says the trustee shall. So, that's so yeah. right. right. I, I, I don't, okay. you know, I don't see an issue pursuant to the vote taken. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 I have yeah. one other question. Uh, section three point five: The trustee shall hold legal title to all property of the trust, neither the town nor any employee, official, or agent of the town, nor any individual have any right, title, or interest in the trust. But as employees, as an employee of the town. Does the treasurer not have an interest in the trust? Uh, I believe that would be like a matter of the huge trust trust. The old, when I retire, um, the interest that I have is for the trust to make money, obviously. So, um, do I have a personal interest? If the if I'm not, I don't own any share in free. That's the other thing. If, if the only conflict of interest that I would have is if this money is invested in a form that I own shares. Do we have any kind of disclosure or legal language to prevent this or any future treasurer from having that conflict of interest? Well, once money is in print, it's actually managed by, by the state. By well, it also is their, their money managers within print that are actually managing these, this fund. So he doesn't make a lot of investment choices about what particular. Hey, when you're in print, once they, yeah, once it's in there, they're making the um, choices about asset allocation and what where the money is being invested to get us to where we're going. But so he's not actually making the decision saying, I'm going to invest in. But can a treasurer hypothetically have a separate involvement with print? I don't know. Like I personally so. in some way? Mm -hmm. Well, if he, if he had like so. a... As a person, he wouldn't qualify. No. Yeah. So, okay. it's, it, is, it is really set up for our state and local municipalities to fund their pensions. That's what PRIT does. That's all they do. Um, and so I think it would be hard for him to have a conflict. It couldn't unless he started a town. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Then. Okay. It's, it's secret. I was trying to make the connection. You can't. And I think that's why they do this. It's another vehicle to prevent 
people having interest in it. You know? Because you can't, Brick Briggs is completely separate. It's owned by the state. They get the whole government authority, so there's no way that you benefit from it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Any other questions? What do you, were you satisfied with the shall explanation? Um, yes, I am satisfied with the shall explanation. I'm sufficiently yeah. satisfied to vote to, or to be willing to execute today. I don't know if others are. I, I, I feel that way, yes. Okay. Um, anyone who says the fact that John is not here, um, Bob, did he make any mention of? I haven't talked to him about this topic at all, so. Okay. No, I haven't here, but no. I would think I he had a concern. He so. did mention that he wasn't going to be here, and I didn't think to email him about it. Or, can, um, we, can we not execute it with there being only four of us? I think or we you can. You can. can. question whether you want to. More just a courtesy. If this was sure. a topic of interest for him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would want to hold off. But if he hasn't mentioned it, then. Okay. All right. So. so there isn't a motion, but Sharon has to invent one for you. Mm -hmm. So it's what I came up with is motion to accept and execute the trust document as written. Okay. So how about move to, sorry, accept and Move to execute, accept and execute accept, yeah. the trust doc, the, the OPEB, OPEB trust, trust document as written. Yeah. As written. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? So the last piece is that you have to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, a hard copy? Yeah. Oh, I have a hard copy. copy. Scott? All right. Do you have a pen? All right, so... Bill has a question. Oh, it's not. Oh, Bill? Are you holding the public hearing on the... Changes. So we have a gentleman up, up sitting up here. Oh, I'll go talk to him. Oh, do you him. want yeah. to check? Thanks, Bob. But to answer your question, Bill. Yeah. To answer your question, Bill, we'll be opening the hearing because it's um, yeah. scheduled for tonight. And we have to. Yeah. Um, we will take any public comment if there is any. Um, otherwise, they, we'll postpone it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So while we get settled, why don't we just take a two-minute break because Bob's leaving the next one. Before we do that, yeah. there's one more thing looks like related to Andrew, right, to request. Andrew's doing the tax title thing. Do you want him to do that or yeah. not? Oh, is he doing tax title or Bob? Yeah, he's doing a tax title. Okay. What's the verdict, Bob? I couldn't find it. Oh, okay. I just wanted to mention before we go to him is just that there is seven steps to invest with Britain. We're about three after we ex execute this trust document, we're on step four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the first is to accept Chapter 32B, Section 20. We've done that twice, so we accepted it, and then we reaccepted it once the legislation was updated. Adopt an OPEP funding policy. We did that with um, FinCom um, back in August of 2018. Um, tonight, hopefully, we'll, we've, do we vote that? Yep. yep. Voted to um, declare the trust. Um, step four is for entry to sign an investment agreement with um, the State um, Retirees Benefit Trust Fund. And then town council will need to um, write a letter representing the all legal steps that have been properly taken. So anything that the legislation outlines or that PRIT has asked for, that we've done everything legally and is in order and that we have the right to invest in the State Retirement Trust which I think is why he put that specifically in there, so that it wasn't vague at all. Um, and then we would submit all those documents to the State, um, the state Retirement Benefits Trust Fund Board um, for their next meeting. If they approve it, they would sign off, and then we would invest our money. We could start um, putting money in. So we're almost there, halfway there, um, just so you're aware. <laughs> and just if I could to understand, is it um, it's one pool? Or do you actually get to allocate inside of their options? They they allocate. They allocate. So you say, here's the money, and then they decide. The only decision that the trustee is going to make is, do I want to put this money in the PRIT fund? And once he does that, they manage the money. Got it. Got it. So they become, do we currently have a money manager that's involved with OPEB monies right now? Do oh, no, just, just the treasurer. Okay, no. just the treasurer. The, pen the pension is in print. It's cheap. 
Um, and the retirement board has hired an investment advisor to help us bring, you know, we're getting closer to being fully funded to um, take some of the money out of the, the PRIT fund and put it into PRIT sleeves where we actually can control our allocation a little bit better. But that's a long way off for the OFAP. That's when you're trying to reduce your risk or control your um, asset allocation yourself. We're nowhere near that. We're just starting with the OFAP. Thank you. Thank you. You right. <laughs> So, Bob, we'll reach out to John to have him sign. All right. So, next up, we'll be having a discussion on tax title properties. And I believe first. I can't wait. So um, first of all, the mem I apologize for the memory, it was on the fly, um, I was flying to uh, LA and I did it on, on, the, on my computer and I didn't have a, a full memo so I sent it over and they just copy and paste up. So it's going to be more formal next time. Uh, just a little background, when I started working for the town, um, I took over some of the work from the previous treasurer and um, one of them, one of the responsibility for the treasurer is to deal with the tax titles and the foreclosed properties. Um, the previous treasurer, she was very, very strict when it came to um, legal matters and she would not do anything that was against the law or it, was, it didn't follow the proper uh, legal procedure. Uh, as I started working for the, with the, for, I was just looking at the foreclosed properties and just the process, in the process of working with them, seeing how many we have and all that stuff, I emailed the, the tax title attorney. And the first thing that he said, he uh, he mentioned the um, this section of law, chapter 60, um, section 77B, and asked me if the previous treasurer had, um, had done anything with approving this section of the law, because it's required by law in order for a person to work on this um, on the foreclosed properties. And I did not have any records of it. I, I reached out to Laura, the town clerk, she didn't have any records. Unfortunately, the, the previous treasurer is no longer with us, so, so that was, we lost a huge resource because she was guiding me in a, in a lot of things and I, um, I just couldn't find anything at all. So the tax title attorney suggested that instead of spending all of this time looking, why don't you talk to the select board and see if they're willing to do a roll call vote. That's all it takes to assign a custodian that will um, take care of the administrative side. And I said, well, I would like to do some work before I go to them. And he basically said, if you want to do any work that has an action associated with it, you can't because you're not appointed. You're not legally appointed for it. So um, the reason that I'm in front of you is um, this chapter, where uh, this section will at least allow me to start work, working with this foreclosed property and come back and report to you what I find and what the next step. So you'd still be um, in charge of making most of the decision. However, the administrative part, um, it's going to be done by me. It, it can get pretty intense with the paperwork. Um, like we have a good attorney that um, at least it helps me with it because I, I can't, you can't, you can't do this by yourself, you know, so. Um, but that's the main reason. Um, I'm going to still come back to you and report on what I find and then we can have a longer conversation. However, the first step will be that you need a custodian in order to do this. And uh, a lot of times this is the easy way of doing it. They just appoint the treasurer. The treasurer follows the tax title process very closely. Um, and 
foreclosed properties nowadays are very, very rare. They don't have people just pay their tax title. It just doesn't make any sense, you know. So um, these are very rare. I know other towns, um, when it comes to foreclosed properties, they um, they do appoint the treasurer. It's but it's done back in the days. Most likely it was done for us too. I just can't find anything at all. Because I can't imagine our previous treasurer doing any work without having this section of the law. So I'm, I'm, I, I think it was done at some point in time, but we just don't have a record of it. So better being safe than sorry. Um, that's why it's just an administrative matter. Um, and then um, I can come back to you and report on what I find and we can have a longer conversation of what we can do and what other options are there and all that stuff. So Thank let you. me know if you guys any any questions. Yes, my question. So you get involved once the foreclosure is complete. Is that correct? The correct. property's been foreclosed on. Correct. It's finished. The court has said it reverts to the town. And then the issue is it reverts to the town, but there's no one that can deal with it. Is that where we are right now? Right. Exactly. So once that happens, uh, once it hits that foreclosed, um, there is back and forth that still has to go on. But because it's a full board, that back and forth needs to go with the board, not with the custodian. So that administrative piece is just a nightmare. So they are signed instead of dealing with a full board, they are signed they like to deal with one person, and that one person gets in touch with the attorney, and that's, the attorney will do most of the work, but the administrative side. It's just more, um, it's easier having one person that deals with it on a daily basis than a group that meets tw uh, once in two weeks or every other week, so. I, I, yeah. I think I need to back up a little bit to okay. understand Absolutely. your yeah. your role. M my understanding of foreclosures is that when uh, a home is foreclosed upon, it it um, is it go the it's the lender, the bank who has who takes ownership of it um, and has title of of the property. But but in your memo and in in mm -hmm. what and what Mark said, the town is taking ownership or, or is taking title so is this in the context of where someone had already paid for their paid off their mortgage but still had property taxes That's to pay it. and then failed to pay the property taxes right correct okay which is very rare mm. sure. but it happens it does happen yeah okay. yeah okay. It's, so that's why it's um, and the other thing is i can't dig through this information because i don't have the legal authority yet yeah to find out what happened. Mm -hmm. So we're just guessing at this point. Um, and I know in the kind of the, the mortgagee mortgage or situation, there's a there's all of this process and notification. And what happens um, what happens in Reading or what happens in any community mm -hmm. um, when someone isn't paying their taxes? What is that process? Is there, is there um, is there a conversation? Is there a notice? Is there an attempt to negotiate or come up with a payment plan? How does that work? Right. So everything is outlined in the law. The tax okay. title attorney, uh -huh. the law is very specific mm -hmm. when it comes to um, notifications okay. of the people that live there. Mm -hmm. It's so specific that if you don't abide by it, mm -hmm. if the law says you need to give notice by 15 days and, you and then you get it on the 16 day, right. it, mm -hmm. it just nulls it out. So okay. our tax title attorney makes sure that that notice section is fully compliant and fully done. Okay. Um, so I am guessing that that's already been done, but I don't know yet. So yes. when I when I look into it, I'll be able to be a little more specific. Um, it was just I was advised from a tax title attorney: don't do anything yet unless you go in front of the board and ask for them to appoint you as the administrator or the custodian of this. Um, so. And since I'm not under his rules, I can say that for many years uh, the town has worked out things with the owners. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, Bill. Um, the town has no interest in owning property. Sure. So we've always worked with the owner, sometimes their family, in a payment plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can't afford this, how about this? Mm -hmm. um, and generally the treasurer has written up uh, a payment plan, and then sometimes it's adhered to, sometimes it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually in Reading. Um, pretty far down the road where we finally say we just can't push this off forever. It's not fair to the other taxpayers, yeah. but it's a long process. Yeah. And then the treasurer has come to this board um, to execute tax title and to do a taking. Mm -hmm. 
but again, that's it's only a couple times in my memory. Yes, and in, in those situations, um, does then the town effectively evict the, or does it get to the point where you it have could. to then, it could it potentially could. get to the point where you would evict the resident? So if the board remembers that the property we own jointly, if you will, with Wakefield, um, that was in tax title. Um, the folks walked away from that property and, and with a property tax bill. Um, and so no one was living there. And it sat there for many years until we got together and figured out maybe we should do something about this. So every town's appetite is a little different for how long to take and how to treat the individuals. Um, but I think m most communities are pretty comfortable saying they just don't want to own it. They just sure. want the, their payment back. Sure. So ultimately, um, you know, in a property where no one's living, it's a little easier. The town will right. sell it and then take back the property tax. Uh, and then depending on it, if there are other liens, which there could be on the property, the other folks get paid also. But I think Andre's being careful. He hasn't really investigated yet because sure. he was told not to. Sure. But I'm speaking sort of more historically. I guess then historically, uh, I know in some communities, tenant groups kind of get together and try to, after, after their homes have been closed upon, residents try to, to, to see if they can work out with the bank the ability to stay and pay rent mm -hmm. to the bank in the home that they used to own. Is that something that's happened? I mean, I, I know this is probably extremely rare, um, but has, is that ever yeah, something? I mean, I assume that the town yeah, like probably to do doesn't have a strong interest in being a landlord either. Right. right. It's, it's difficult to say. The, yeah. the one thing that I'll tell you right now is if you go, I just went through a process of getting a mortgage. Mm -hmm. They don't let you pay your taxes anymore. The reason that they don't want to do that is you mm -hmm. have so to, it's all wrapped they pay. Because right? if right. you don't pay, right. they take over the property. Right. The, the, right. Town cannot, the, town. Mm -hmm. the town cannot mm -hmm. foreclose on right. you anymore. So they will take over the property. Mm -hmm. So that's why this, this instance is so, so rare. Mm -hmm. uh, but. You but know, there are, you're aware that there are a couple of situations right now. I'm, would be I'm aware. Still. I don't know if it's legal for him to be aware. <laughs> <Okay>. So, so <laughs> you're again, aware. as I, as I yeah. said, from the paperwork that I have from the previous treasurer, mm -hmm. there are, um, I would say there are a couple of properties yes. that I need to look into it and see okay. if they've gone through the process or not. And you're saying that if you would, you would bring, um, bring this back anytime there was such a situation, you would bring it back to the board as to how to proceed? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll investigate it and mm -hmm. see, find out what happened. Okay. And then at the end, um, it will still come back to the board and I'll ask them what do you would like, what would you like to do with it. Again, we still need to um, consider the legalities of it. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, if the previous owners mm -hmm. are still alive, for example, or if right. there is a heir for, for yeah. you. Right. So, so there is multiple options sure. that you can do. So Every situation, um, I'm sure, is right. different. The, the one thing that I'll tell you is that in the recent uh, Massachusetts Treasure Collector School that I went, um, it's become, as Bob said, it's become a practice that the towns are, they, they're not in the business of owning houses. Right. They don't want to have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. But again, if it if it affects the the numbers or if they if it affects their budget, there are other things that you can do with with these proceeds. I've I've seen it done all like affordable housing trust funds. You can do all of these things with with the proceeds. So okay, thank you. I the, appreciate down, that. Down the road, you will make that decision what you want to do if you decide to do anything with it. But this will be the first step. Okay. Um, so I don't have a question about the actual appointing him as the as the custodian. I do have a question as far as if there are any occupants in any of these properties, yep. um, is it would it become the authority of the custodian, or would the board still maintain authority to evict or how to handle those occupants? So the one thing that I'll tell you is. The town is protected in no matter what. We have insurances on this property, so we are completely protected when it comes mm -hmm. to these things. So, because that's the other thing you need to worry about. If there is people that Flat live up. there, right. if there is, again, I need to investigate if there is, there are still people that live there, you need to be protected because I have heard a few horror stories in the, at mm -hmm. the school. One of them was a homicide. So, mm -hmm. 
and, and that was the urgency that I brought to Bob and I said, Bob, we need to take care of these properties to protect the town from some. If something happens in these properties, we're going to be liable. It's the same thing so that's happening in the town. Does Could you speak up a little, Andrew? Yeah, I absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> but again, as far as if there are occupants in these properties, does this motion to appoint you as custodian grant you the authority to evict them, or does that um, responsibility and authorities lie with the board? I will still come back for your permission for it. I can't just go in and start evicting people, you know what I mean? I'll come back and I'll report that the reporting section mm -hmm. of it is I'll come back to you and I'll say, this is what I found, these are our options. Again, it will still, have, the tax title attorney is gonna be involved with it and he's gonna give us a few options. Mm -hmm. But I would not go and act on my behalf because mm -hmm. it's just not, so the, that's why you have a custodian. I'm still, um, so if you appoint me, you're not going to lose anything. You just have somebody that will do the legwork. I'll still come back to you. At the end of the day, you still make the decisions. It's just um, someone that will do the administrative side for you. Which sounds lovely to me, so thank you. It's in your packet. I have a one I can do tonight. It's at the bottom. Um, at the bottom. to appoint the treasurer as a custodian under chapter 60, section 77B. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Can I just suggest, make it just a little bit more specific? Sure. Appoint the treasurer as a custodian under chapter 60, section 77B. And appoint the treasurer as a custodian that would have the care, custody, management, and control for land acquired through foreclosure under section yeah, I think that's exactly right. Did you get a lift? Yeah. So I'll read it, I'll read it back. So, <laughs> so, so it's, it's this first paragraph. This is a friendly amendment. Okay. Just, just, we, uh, just, just a process so. issue here, Mark. Um, we had a, uh, a we had motion a was made, yeah. we had a second, uh, and then... Okay, I'll make it friendly. So, good. All right, so we have a friendly amendment. Is it accepted as a friendly amendment? Yes. <laughs> okay, for me. so now it will read, move to appoint the treasurer as the custodian under Chapter 60, Section 77B, so that the custodian would have the care, custody, management, control for land acquired through foreclosure under Section 80 of MGL. Okay. Uh, it's a friendly amendment. The second approves. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Motion carries. Great. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right, so next up on the agenda, we have a hearing to review the select board liquor policy changes. Um, however... I'll just walk in the hallway quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, um, however, our attorney isn't able to be here this evening, and John, who has led this process to review the policies, is also unable to be here. Um, so we will be opening the hearing. Uh, if anyone is interested, no, okay. If anyone is provide, interested in providing public comment on the subject, we will take it now. Otherwise, we will continue it to a future date. So if you can open the hearing, Mark. So I need to read the... Uh, you just need to read that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the inhabitants of the town of Reading, please take notice that the select board of the town of Reading will hold a public hearing on October 15, 2019 at 8 p.m. in the select board's meeting room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on amending Article 3, Licenses, of the select board's policies, including but not limited to section 3.2 liquor license policies. A copy of the proposed amendments to this article will be available in the select board packet made public on Wednesday, October 9th, 2019 on the website at www.readingma.gov. The current article is available on the town website at https colon slash slash www.readingma.gov slash select board slash pages slash select board policies. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 4 p.m. on October 15, 2019 to townmanager at ci.reading.ma.us by order of Robert W. Lelasher, town manager. Okay, great. So, I'll open it up to public comment. <laughs> Seeing none, uh, we will continue the hearing to November 19th at 8 p.m. Do we need to do a motion, a motion to, yes, to we have a motion that? Yeah. Move to continue the hearing on the Select Board Policies Article 3 to November 19, 2019 at 8 p.m. Is there a second? A second. Oh, any further discussion? 
Uh, all those in favor? Uh, next up, we need to sign a land purchase document. Ms. Perdi, is on property only? Yeah, this is, if I may, um, okay. this is the second and, and less expensive and smaller piece. Um, previously, the board has dealt with the larger piece and the more expensive piece. Um, this didn't have to technically be on your agenda because it's already a thing you've, dis you've discussed and voted on, but it just seems more transparent to do so. Um, there is no motion required. The board has always already taken that action. You just need to sign this document that's being circulated. Great, thank you. Can I just have a question, very much related. So, uh, Bob, in your written update to us, you mentioned that the status of the third property in question, the Timberneck right. property, um, is now no longer. So the plan has changed. Has it been sold? Is that a finished activity or um, I have not seen any sales. The assessor's not seen any sales. Um, the owner of the property just said that he was going to, um, and I believe his word was sell it to the hunters. Um, you know, I, I had a discussion with a hunter, and what it could be is he's just leasing it to the hunters as opposed to selling it. So it's the same effect. Uh, but instead of paying twenty-five or a thousand or more, it could just be an annual payment, and he still retains the land. So I don't know is the answer. He just said that he had a better offer from the hunters, and he was going to sell it to them. Is what he said to me. Okay. But I, we have not seen a transaction. Is Thank there you. an opportunity for us to respond? Um, we've tried. And, and okay. And no. Again, very shortly before that answer, John Halsey and I had met with him, and it seemed like a clear path ahead. So this was kind of a sharp turn, if you will. Hmm. What kind of hunting are we talking about? Uh, bow hunting, which is what has been there historically. Hmm. All right. Yeah. The good news is it's uh, still owned by the same person, and he may change his mind in the future. Thank you. Interested Thank you. In approaching that if it comes up. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, I can't do it back that way. Okay. Yeah. I'll hand this. I hand this one. I'll hand it that way. Thanks, <laughs> All right. <clears throat> do we need to have John sign this? It's not necessary. No. Okay. All right. So, also, all right. Next up, we'll be voting to approve town manager goals. So, this is something that we had talked about in say, June. Uh, and generally speaking, the goals are approved shortly after the start of the new fiscal year, to coincide with the town manager's contract um, renewal, which occurs in May or June. So we are a little behind. Um, this is the first step in order to proceed with the town manager of an annual evaluation. So with that in mind, on page 79 um, of the packet, we do have the town manager goals that they should be familiar to everyone. Uh, Bob, if you'd like to give a brief update on anything since we've last talked about this. Sure. Um, I, I specifically did not update any of the text just so it could l lie the way it were in, in June. Um, you know, we've charged ahead on most of these topics anyways. Um, many of you atten have attended the community conversations held in the library by Amy. Um, we have not done much with volunteerism, so that would be a change if we were to. Again, the board is pretty familiar with three and four, both parts of economic development, kind of two different prongs, if you will. Um, building security governments, governance, rather, we have worked on. Uh, town meeting authorized the building security study and then authorized the, uh, the debt authorization for the whole project. Uh, governance is a subset of that. So the schools, and we have had preliminary discussions, but we have not gone far on that. Um, my guess is that governance will be something discussed in public, generally speaking, because it will be policy, not your purview. Um, employ employer attraction and retention in December. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. The building. I, I, I missed your point on building security governance. Um, so 
governance is policy, it's rules and regulations. For instance, the school department has oodles of policy. Right. Um, this is the way that students will behave in the building from a security standpoint. Yeah. Um, we don't have that currently for town buildings. The uh -huh. library does, but the rest of the town buildings do not. That's something we'd likely want to develop. And, and that would come to the board. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, employee retach attraction and retention. Um, you will have an update from the HR director as I think it's the December 3rd. It's the first December meeting, which isn't technically a budget meeting. Uh, charter and general bylaw updates have been ongoing. Um, Matt could give you an update if you, ch if you ever want to hear about uh, his, uh, his ventures with the bylaw committee. Um, in town meeting, you have, I think it's three or four zoning articles that will finish off that work for the year. Um, software review and evaluation, I'll, I'll just be quiet about because I have not asked for an update. Um, we did, as part of the override, get a software uh, coordinator position and she's been excellent. Uh, emergency management, <coughs> uh, the chief, uh, by, by that I mean the chief Burns, is continues to be the emergency management director and every year we work on different tabletop exercises. Um, we are discussing uh, whether the next one should include um, other multi-towns. That would be a little more difficult to pull off. It probably wouldn't be possible in a year, but maybe over two years. Um, I don't know. I don't think the board attended the last one. It was at Austin Prep, and it was it was really good. The headmaster was very helpful. And uh, both our staff and the headmaster staff, as is always the case, learn a lot from exercises. Uh, practicing is always great. Um, the next two are capital projects or capital aspects, parks and fields and buildings. I would say we have not made much progress on parks and fields. Um, if you look at the capital plan that will go to November town meeting, a lot of the proposed funding of parks and fields is in the future. Some of that is because uh, a year or two ago the state uh, funded 900,000 odd in a bond bill, which we may or may not ever see. So we pushed all, all that work uh, into the future and that was non-school parks, if you will. Um, there are some proposed changes to school area, playgrounds and parks and facilities. Um, one of the uh, decision points though is the elementary school space study. We don't want to do anything really virtually in ele any elementary school until we know what their plan is because they are looking at all five uh, elementary schools just to see what their options are. Do we know when the results of that study will be complete? Um, we don't, but you'll have an update tomorrow night from the superintendent um, as part of the financial forum. Thank you. Yep. And then lastly, buildings is probably a longer term thing. There's, there's a few aspects to, to that. Uh, the TPW garage we've had very little discussion about in this room. Um, elementary school space is, is certainly ahead of that and, and more important. We've had a discussion previously about a community center slash maybe a different building senior center. Um, that is not advanced. I know the board was interested in that. I don't think there's any other buildings offhand, but that's again a longer term uh, discussion. Um, I was also open to any <coughs> suggestions the board may have on uh, on other goals, I have not heard anything since June. So, uh, Bob, mm -hmm. to, to be clear, these goals were set by uh, the these goals are board. no. These goals are suggested by myself through town staff for the next year, for the current year we're in, FY20. So, so starting July first. We reviewed these um, late spring. Okay. I think it was June, late June. June. Uh, yes, okay. right. Um, so these should be all fairly familiar to everyone uh, because we did talk about them. Yeah, so, so the question just is, do you agree with these goals, disagree with these goals, have any other suggestions in mind? You if know? anything, if anyone has um, new goals, bearing in mind that we are now in the middle of October, uh, sort of several months in, but and, and admittedly sometimes priorities can change yeah. mid-year. Yeah. Um, but as we choose to evaluate, um, we will be evaluating the town manager in June of, or the summer of 2020, 2020 thank you. Um, so that would be what these goals would be. Right. Uh, I just I jumped to ahead the, into the, uh, uh, in the future topic of tonight, which will be the evaluation of his, of his 2019-20. Yes, 
And that's next up when we review right, the form. Right. That so will be the next step. I apologize but, for, for yep, jumping ahead. Yep. Um, so is the feeling of the board that we are comfortable with these goals for the town manager for the remainder of the 1920 timeline? My only um, possible addition, and it's, it's one that almost is, I think, inherent um, and a continuous goal is, is the customer service component of town hall. Um, and I know it's included in last year's goal, so I don't know if it's right. if it's worth kind of carrying that over into this year um, or this coming uh, fiscal year. But I would agree with that. I think that could fall into me. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's simple. Um, you'll get an update in December if you think there's more work to do, and there always is. There, um, yeah, you know, we'll, there always we'll add is. It. Um, the board had asked me to remove operational things that happen mm -hmm. automatically, mm -hmm. so that was one of the reasons. Under that, um, I'm very glad you're involved in those community conversations. I, I think having the town manager there is, is really critical mm -hmm. to this. Um, I just wanted to be careful about uh, express the tenor of the national debate leaking into these discussions. Uh, that's not necessarily a concern. I think that may be um, that's that's a part of, of these community discussions. And I think it's good to um, that we hear about them uh, if they're behind some of the. challenges that the community uh, conversations are trying to address um, and then so so that was just one comment on the first one the second one if I may uh, not the second one I apologize um, the retention uh, Bob mm -hmm. um, just to just to remind you um, some meetings ago I thought it would be a good idea to get the data on the last three years or mm -hmm. something of um, people who have uh, come, left, how long they've been here, etc. Mm -hmm. So um, just a reminder that that would be a good thing to have. Yes, I expect that's what Judy will present you in the first meeting in December. Okay. As well as anecdotes, stories. Um, okay. You know, we, we lose people all the time. You right. Can't, you can't not lose them. You just have to be careful of the reasons you lose them and mm -hmm. pay attention to that. Okay. We're, uh, we're losing a, a fine uh, HR generalist um, who we share with the schools and the town. Um, he's becoming an assistant town manager, so that's not an opportunity we had for him. He's jumping up several levels, and good for him. Um, we we give our employees good opportunities, good training, and when things like this happy uh, happen, we're happy for them. Uh, you know, that's that's what an employer is supposed to do, and we'll we'll do it all over again. So you can't stop turnover, especially in such a strong market, but you have to understand why. So the, the one other topic that we probably should discuss as a goal relates to the police chief hiring activities. If I remember correctly, two years ago when the DPW director um, was being hired, that was one of the goals that was actually on here. Mm -hmm. And it's somewhat operational, but it actually is quite distinct. The board actually t told me specifically to take that off. Which one? Police chief not to include something we would have to do. It's operational. I, I'll do whatever you like, but... Because that was the discussion with the TPW director one, is that does not belong as a goal. Now, any board member can have their own opinion, so I'm not giving mine. Yeah, I mean, I think this, if, if we look at what's happening on this list, none of these are specific to the operations side of maybe emergency management, right, and capital, but, right. mm -hmm. you know, the, the idea with, there, there's a standard job description, and then there's separate expectations that we as a board have for him. Hiring the police chief, in my opinion, someone behind the DPW director falls under general job description of making sure we have the appropriate staff in place. I would agree with you, except that it's actually a distinct process. Fair. Um, mm -hmm. It's not kind of, it's not, I don't 
mean run of the mill, but I'm going to say run of the mill. It's not your run of the mill hire. <laughs> this is actually a, a, you know, a very important activity for the town. Um, and and I, I did bring it up with a little bit of hesitation because it is somewhat operational, but on the other hand, it is uh, maybe one of the most important things to take place in this fiscal year. I, if, if I could respond, I, I agree that it's, it's, it's extremely important. Um, it's covered under his new oil job description, and um, as such, he has to. We'll, we'll, I think we wanted to make these goals to be a set of goals that sort of the board had and was asking Bob to uh, target. Above and beyond. Yeah, it's a, a sort of above and beyond. I mean, obviously, the operations ones tend to fit within that. But if you if you look at these twelve, none of them have to happen. Yeah, some yes. of them should happen or you know or mm -hmm. ought yeah. to happen, but none of them have to happen. They are all over and above, as you say, and that's from my past discussions with the board. That was your preference. I don't. I'll do anything you want. Yeah, that's <laughs> not the problem. You're going to hear about the police chief hiring process because this board has to approve it. So you'll get the full story right, whether it's right. a goal or not. Right. 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 It's also part of the it's part of the charter that he has the responsibility of hiring the police chief. In, in the it's past, more visible aspect of his job, admittedly. In the past, we would have this slew of goals, yep. which which yep. Yep. was Mr. just Crazy. part of his job description, and and we we didn't really feel that was meaningful. But rather, what sort of direction does the is the board looking to take um, through the town manager? I think these are. Now, I, I will note though that as part of their, this is so these goals I view as separate from the fuller evaluation because the full evaluation, like any employee evaluation, should review how an employee is doing in all aspects of their job. Mm -hmm. So that part will still happen mm -hmm. uh, for all those job descriptions items. If you Right. Um, and these are separate. I'm I'm comfortable moving that discussion to the to the review format. Um, I too late, but I sent some information to Bob, just some suggestions I had seen. I looked at a couple other towns and cities and found some evaluation forms. Push it to the next discussion. Is there um, there are cases in, in reviews, but there's not an overall review. We only review by category, not overall performance. Well, let's, let's, let's table about that because that is the next item on the agenda. Um, but as far as the goals for the remainder of 19 and then um, the first half of 20, um, are we comfortable with this and adding Anne's point on perhaps under community for um, communica or communication and customer service or just customer service? Well, now I'm wondering, given your point, but it is kind of part of the general mm -hmm. job description and we can about, sorry, Given that it's part of the general job description, yeah. you know, even if not literally, it may not be in the charter, but it's an expectation, I think, of everyone that the town hall and the town manager serve the community and yeah. its residents, then it's certainly something that could be evaluated as part of the annual evaluation and does not need to be goal because I think it's it, it's inherent to the position. Um, I certainly would hope that Town Hall would go above and beyond in its customer service, but I don't think it's a, a above and beyond the expectations of the job. Right. I'm sort of torn on this one because this one was mentioned last year in the evaluation as an area of interest to some board members. Mm -hmm. And so, and as an area that could see improvement on the, on, the on the customer service side. Mm -hmm. So it could be a goal for the remainder of the year, it, separate from. Yeah, I mean, I think Bob's a, aware of, of that concern. And, and we have, and you're going to probably tell me that um, HR will be reporting this in the next meeting. But um, for example, under um, the public um, service aspect, customer satisfa satisfaction, is somewhere in some policy we do have a statement that says um, 
a uh, suggestion box or something like that will be placed um, at at each counter, and and you know maybe they'll be instituting that. I, I don't know, but that th those are things that do fall under um, the day-to-day -day op operation. I think you know if if we choose to include it, I do think we need to provide more specifics yes. other than yeah. right. Customer service, mm -hmm. so I'd be comfortable adding it if that's the flavor, if that's sort of the feeling of the board. But I would want to make sure that we establish what the expectation is around that topic. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm looking at the employee attraction and retention. And to me, that one feels somewhat similar. In not not the topic, but the focus that we're asking be placed on. Right, it is actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, fair point. Oh. Fair point. Yes, some of these things, again, where you know, best practices are things to do, but when it's a goal, that means you're going to get a report on it, where you normally wouldn't get a report on employee retention and retention. Mm -hmm. So that's another distinction. Um, again, I don't really mind what you do, but last year in the budget process, there were funds set aside specifically for employee training. That, that was a discussion through the budget process and so you know customer service if you will made more sense in conjunction to the budget that was there um, now we're back to the same old budget but again I don't mind I think uh, Vanessa's idea about you know is there something specific that you're interested in as a board would be helpful mm -hmm. okay. um, so we could you know I think we should <laughs> given given the timeline vote on this set of goals um, mm -hmm. What we can do, um, if the board is open to it, is add customer service as a goal under community. Mm -hmm. However, at a future meeting, and I mean a very few near future mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. we would need to set aside 20 minutes um, to, to define what that looks like. I, I think um, we can certainly, we can and should certainly do that. I think where I'm, where my mind is, is similar to some of the things that we, some of the goals that I hope that we will be accomplishing with um, our work on the select board communications policy, which is responsiveness and com and completion in, in our response to residents. So that's a goal for the board, hopefully it can similarly be a, a goal for, um, for town hall generally. So is everyone comfortable with that? We'll add sure. this, and then we'll add it to a future agenda? Yes. Um, okay. okay. All right, any other questions, changes that you'd like to make to these goals? Everyone's happy with them? All right. Yes. Do we have, I don't think we need to, I don't think we need to move. Do we don't need, we don't need a motion on that. Okay, I'll, so I'll, I'll accept your comments as okay. instruction. Great. So next up, we'll be reviewing the actual uh, form for the town manager evaluation. Now there are in the packets some comments from Andy. Yes. Um, regarding the how the rankings are organized. Um, that is on page 83, and then the form itself starts on page 85. So Mark, since you particular, in particular had reviewed other towns forms, do you specifically have suggestions or no, yep, yep. open it up? And I apologize for not getting to them in advance. Um, so a couple of quick comments. One is that we have a summary of each section of goals and an opportunity to make comments, but there's not really an overall summary rating, if you will. Yeah. And my thought was that that would be a good addition to it, part of the summary section. So we have, kind of have it by, by section and then overall. Okay. Um, it could either be at the beginning or page 10, which is kind of the, the end of everything. 
turns out there's a blank page sitting there. Yeah. Um, and I'm just was waiting if that might be the place. Just waiting. <laughs> You know, each of the sections allows for comments on the criteria of goals and standards, but any comments beyond these um, in general feedback and suggestions and ideas for the future, there isn't really a place for that. And do you have, do you have a um, example from another town that you could provide us with that we could uh, maybe so we don't have to recreate? Um, I don't, but I actually think it should be freeform. Freeform. Right. In other words, it's more of a comment section, overall comments. Okay. As opposed to a 1 to 10. As opposed to a 1 to 10. No, no, no. I, I, yeah, I think that it's more, everything here is, is very prescribed and specific to yeah. each of the activities. And that's, you know, for the specific goals, that's great. But as we just discussed, there's kind of the overall How's it going, if you will? Hmm. And maybe that's an opportunity to, to offer feedback from members. So it would be something like uh, additional comments. Like, I think you mean like a summary? Yeah, summary I think is a better way of putting it. I forget how the superintendent's is worded, but there's something to that effect. I think there's value to it, and I think it, it allows, if something doesn't quite fit into a specific goal, but it's actually something you want to say, <laughs> okay. there's a place to put it. Yeah. I think that's great. That's great. Uh, so, Bob, as I went through this, I realized some of these are the previous years. So, for example, like the DPW director. You know, now that would be the police chief. Well, these are last year's goals, though, that you're going to evaluate me on. Oh, right, when you're back up, when you're forward. You just yeah. flipped what I did. Yeah, I, yeah. I absolutely did. Okay. Um, is the board comfortable, you know, just because this is a written document doesn't mean it's right. Um, <laughs> is the board comfortable that, for instance, goals are the first thing discussed and then there's other aspects? You know, this is really an opportunity to, if you will, throw it out and put it the way you'd like it, whatever makes you most comfortable. This just know. happened to be a form we used in 2015. Yeah. I don't think the order matters okay. per, for me. Do you, Bob? Uh, no. Um, I don't think so. It does kind of it jumps right into it. But. It gets very detailed oriented right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then maybe if Mark's suggestion is used, it's, it sort of leads to the summary at the end instead of most documents are the other way. But uh, I. Yeah, no, I think you're right, and, and that's why I, I think I struggle too, saying that it, a summary looks like it fits on right with page one, yeah. yet it really is much better at page ten. Right, so you could flip the whole document, really. Yeah, I think that's a, an interesting suggestion. Actually, in um, pre previous years, at the beginning of the evaluation, there was a little box, and I forget what it was titled. Um, General I mean, there is one, if you look at uh, page, it's 88 of the packet, but it's step three. Mm -hmm. Add summary level evaluator comments on attainment of goals and performance of standards. I mean, that seems to me the summary box. Yeah. Because it's gold and performance on standards. 88. Page 88 of the PDF. I think Mark. One of the issues maybe you're having with this is the same one I am, that from a marketing standpoint, this is a hard document to read. Mm -hmm. The information might be good, but it doesn't jump out at you. Mm. It's a little clunky, but that's okay. Yeah, and, and I actually, maybe I'm wrong, but I looked at that, your page 88, as a follow-up from 86 and 87. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I read it, and, and I think it's because it kind of is, is kind of clunky to, to so, use. So here's step one, right? And then, you know, I, I fill in, you know, met, didn't meet, exceeded. Then there are these indicators based on leadership, management, and community. And then step three is kind of comments about those. I'm sorry, what page are you on? Why generally speaking? So may I? Oh, it's clock. It, it's six it, for instance, if Mark has time and is willing, I'm happy to work with him, you know, off, off site, if, it, if you will, and just improve the form. That was actually going to be my exact recommendation. <laughs> okay. Mark would be willing to do that. Right. Yeah, okay. I'll make time. Can you 
given um, the fact that we're already behind and when we should have completed this assessment. What have I done for last week? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm impressed. Can you, can you have this done I'm for us? I'm a little busy next? last week. Uh, two, weeks. two weeks. Yes. Let's sit down. Yep. Okay. Yep. Bob, does that work for you? Uh, it does. Your meeting is full, so it has to be a relatively short discussion. Mm. But Well, I think um, the way we will organize that is this is the new form. Right. Right. Unless you object. Unless yeah, there yeah. is some yeah. strong, strong objection, objection, we are not yeah. having further discussion on it. The evaluation will take place at X. I mean, okay. <laughs> what, and, and I, I, I don't want to have a dead horse. Yeah. And yeah. I can we, certainly we, we circulate with that with board members and get feedback before the meeting if that's yeah. helpful. That's fine. Yes. All feedback Perfect. would go to Bob. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you can and Bob can publish. Yeah. Right. Um, but but we need to get this, this done. Yeah. Could I just ask, um, it, what, uh, I, I don't like the did not meet met, exceeded. As I said, they're very black and white. Um, they're a bit harsh, I think. Um, and so mm. the, I just looked at other examples online where they used did not meet expectation. Um, it, that's not the best, but what, so what if, what if something is, is um, met He's done seventy percent of, of of the goal, right? Um, it, what do you give him? Met, did not meet. Um, did, would you like a five point scale as opposed to a three? So okay. interestingly enough, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something for you to consider, Mark, is, yeah. is is all I guess. We don't need to get into it now. Yeah. But I've never been comfortable with that. Yeah. It's it's like um, pass fail exceeds. It, it's too it's too black and white, and, and it doesn't really reflect, um, you know. It's hard think, to make it's hard yeah. to make a choice. And, you know, yeah, and, and sometimes it has nothing to do with. I mean, be, it's beyond Bob's control that he can't. Right. Right. I so. actually remember doing some in between last year for just that reason. Yeah. So the five point, just as an example, goes from rarely meets the standard, usually does not meet generally meets, generally exceeds, almost always exceeds, <laughs> five points. I think the five point works. If so if we can convert this, all of these to a five point scale, that'll give us a little bit more flexibility. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. 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 Here's one other quick thing, sorry. Uh -huh. um, there were a couple of very interesting things. So this, the one that I found was a city manager one, so it's not exactly the same. But there were a couple of categories that um, were interesting that they that they included, and I, and I have to do a little more homework to see why. But one of them, here's the category: relations with elected members of the governing body, um, policy execution, reporting, and citizen relations. So these are you know just kind of interesting categories that are, that are you know structurally a bit different, um, and, and I don't think are exactly right given that we're not. Not a uh, city, um, yeah. but it was interesting some of the some of the things that are included in those categories. Those are really interesting. Can I suggest, given the timeline that we're facing now, that we consider that for next year's evaluation? And Bob, could I ask you to put on the list of agenda items and say March, which is right after the election, that this be one of the items that gets tackled sooner rather than later? Sure. So that would be to approve an evaluation form for the year that we're still in, I guess. So that so that the evaluation form in the spring is, is then used is then used to help set goals and to evaluate for the following year. So we're, we're trying to get ahead of it. Yeah, remember in our policy that that Vanessa, mm -hmm. um, you and I were were there uh, last March. Um, when Dan and I presented mm -hmm. the, the uh, changes in policies on, in part, this, and we are supposed we were supposed to have set up a subcommittee to create a form. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, to review the town manager, and that was supposed to be that's supposed to be, I think, reviewed every two years. Um, so that should be that job, that task, or whatever for developing a new form should be done in in subcommittee. Just look at our policy and and, and follow 
can follow. I'm trying to think if we established a subcommittee for that. I don't think you did. I, don't I think, think when don't. Dan and Andy finished, it was just you because what, what you had done was the actual policy. Yep. Um, but not what we had created a subcommittee. Right. So let's I. I Unless the board feels strongly about creating a subcommittee to create the form, I'm comfortable with having Mark sort of take lead on that. For, individual. Does for, that work? For this one, right. I, but I think in the in the future we should try to follow our policies. And I felt a little bad when um, Bob sent all this stuff out, and then I, you know, I recall, oops, we we this is something we should have done. So, okay. and and the other thing th that's in that policy, which we should all probably go back and review, is um, it's important to provide ongoing feedback. In other words, it's not fair mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the right. year right. just to say, you know, I didn't like this, I love I right. this. Mm -hmm. You know, both positive and constructive. Yeah. yeah, as a general rule, nothing in an annual evaluation should come as a surprise. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. I might ask a question. Sure. Um, as part of the discussion with Andy and Dan, <clears throat> the idea of uh, an evaluation form was forward-looking, so that last spring or whenever the board would approve one to be used in the future, not backwards. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if you want to approve a different one in March, when is it for? It's, it's difficult if you're going to change the form from looking at goals in the middle of the year for me to go back to last July and change my behavior, if that's what would be required. Agreed. No, it would need to be forward-looking because it's not fair to okay. move goalposts on you. Well, it would be difficult for you as well. Right. So I just wanted to clarify kind of the timeline. Yes. My so in the spring, it, your objective is to create a form that would, if you will, start on July 1st. Yes. And that is not the same as the evaluation that would come shortly thereafter. That's backward-looking. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Right. We're trying to avoid this scramble. Yeah, I understand. For what will amount to two years from now. Okay. Okay. Right. Cool. All right. Great. Uh, so, Mark, you'll report back. Lovely. Okay. So next up, we will be reviewing the or changing, making the change to the select board policy to change the number of members on ATRAC, the Human Relations Advisory Committee. So, Anne, is this you? This is this is me. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, so the reason for the change is because um, ATRAC is finding itself in a position where they're struggling um, to, to find a quorum of people to meet. Um, they're currently comprised officially of seven members, but with only five appointed. Um, so they need four uh, to, to meet and deliberate. And the reason this is uh, particularly time sensitive is to get the planning underway for the MLK Day breakfast and celebration. Um, and so uh, uh, Bob and I worked with uh, Josh Goldbus, who's the chair of the Human Relations Advisory Committee, to come up with language that would you know, allow all of the existing members um, to you know, retain their membership and for the, for the committee to be able to meet with a quorum of three individuals. And so uh, Bob put this language together. It's, it's, it's simply a change from seven to five. Um, and instead of saying that the committee shall include the following, the committee may include um, the following. And, and um, there are kind of an array of options of individuals. Okay. Um, so procedural question. So sorry, Ann, is that? That's all. Okay. Uh, procedural question, Bob, can you remind me, do we need to have a hearing to make? Okay, perfect. No, uh, Ray has said over in abundance of caution, we have too many hearings. You don't have to have hearings on okay. all parts of your select board policy. This is one of them you don't. Okay. As long as, yeah, that's fine. I, I think as a general practice, they're good for transparency. I think yeah. for this, it's, yeah. Uh, all right, any questions? Okay. Do we have a motion? Move that the board change select board policy section 2.3.1 ATRAC membership from seven to five members as presented. Is there a second? Second. Right. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun and raised my hand and voted for it. Okay. Discussion? Any further hand. discussion? All those in favor? Great.
All right. Uh, so next up, we'll be voting on November town meeting warrant articles. Yes. Uh, so Bob, if you can walk us through this process. Certainly. Um, <clears throat> sometimes uh, the board votes on articles. Uh, many times it does not. It's the board's choice. Uh, if the board does want to take a position on any article and they want town meeting to see their position in writing, um, you have to do it this week. So it could either be tonight or tomorrow night at the financial forum. <coughs> For instance, FinCom has voted on one article so far that involved the retirement board last week. They will presumably vote on the rest of the articles that are financial tomorrow. So that's, that's the background. Um, the board is not obliged to vote on any articles. It can do what it wants. Um, on one of these pages here, uh, let's just see where I put it. I put a little explanation. Um, um, I have it behind me here. Um, by charter, both the Finance Committee and Bylaw Committee are advisory to town meeting and their votes must be reported to town meeting, preferably in writing in advance when possible. Other volunteer boards and committees may also vote on warrant articles and when possible those votes are noted herein with an asterisk next to their name. So the board had not done this until maybe four or five or six years ago when it started to want to give town meeting their views on certain articles and again that's entirely uh, your right. The board can also just stand up at town meeting and speak individually if you haven't taken a vote collectively. All right. So, you know, any of these articles are fair game. Um, probably the natural gas one is more important, I would have to say, than the others. Um, I don't think any article is, is necessarily out of bounds for you. Um, you know, there's no, no uh, votes on reports, for instance, but otherwise any of these is fair game. Um, so, Bob, in the past, have these been voted on one at a time or in its entirety? Um, Boards have done it both ways. They put every article in and then asked to which ones need to be pulled out of sort of a consent agenda, um, or one at a time, somewhat painfully. Okay. Um, why don't we, unless um, someone, unless you really want to go through one at a time, I would recommend doing the consent agenda approach, which is that we move to vote on all articles, and then... And I guess I'd start with Article 3, and then right through to the end. Okay. Yeah. And then is if there, anyone wants to pull them, then we can pull those out separately. Is there, do we feel that there's a value to voting on all of them? The only one that I think it, it that there would be a lot of value in voting on is Article 17, because I think it might result in some confusion for town meeting members if they see that it's presented by two board members. They may think that it's not uh, that the other three board members didn't approve it by omission. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I assume town meeting is hip to the fact that so a warrant can get a, an article can get on the warrant if two or more select board members or if ten, ten or more residents sign a petition. I wouldn't make that I assumption. wouldn't make that assumption. <laughs> I wouldn't make that assumption. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I I agree. I, I'd also like to add before we start to get into it something different uh, than what Ann was saying, and that is the. If we decide to vote on the, the budget uh, articles, mm -hmm. if we could hold off on that until after the FinCom meeting and, or until the financial forum tomorrow night. The, the fi financial forum tomorrow night. And then we could vote tomorrow night. I'd be happy to do that. I'd just like to hear, to be better informed as to, it would be, yes. Um, just out of curiosity, how many of you are planning to attend tomorrow night? Okay. I me. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is um, one thing that is not in the warrant report that there will be a meeting on tomorrow night before the meeting it involves schools. So the budget articles will change. Something will change. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really all I feel like I can say at this point. So waiting on those articles is probably appropriate. That's articles th three or four, maybe both. Yeah. So um, I agree 
and about Article 17 is one. I'm wondering, there's some other ones here where I'm wondering if it makes sense for us to take a position. In other words, if we were just saying, let's just do 17, I would say um, eight, I can get to, I can find it, I wrote right by. Is that the retirement board one or no? No, I didn't say that one because we weren't really involved. Oh, that's the debt for, um, yeah. rescission. Yeah, so that's the rescission of debt. Article, no. Article 8. Article mm -hmm. 8. Page 105, PDF. I have it behind me also. Andy. Oh, that's right. This came from an instructional motion. It says so to see if the town will vote to amend the votes. Is that that bridge meadow lights, yeah. That was so this is rescission of, of yeah. un okay. used, unspent. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I have it on page 104. I just want to make sure that I'm not... Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's Article 8. Yeah, Article 8, okay. Sure. Yeah. okay. Um, so to me, that was one I thought we should talk about. 11, which is... Um, rubbish. It, yeah, rubbish. Exposing. Extending contracts. I had a question on that, if I could ask Bob. Certainly. Yeah. Um, it, is it is it correct if the, if I understood it correctly that we have we created a ten year contract with a five year renewal at the, at, at, for one part of the rubbish system yeah right collection not disposal the collection is disposal not disposal. okay okay and and I will tell you that the market is in such chaos now that giving the town permission to do this may not be in the best interest of the town mm -hmm. um, it's it's chaos right now. It's, it's a monopoly, and many area towns are in, in our boat. It's very unpleasant. I'm sorry, you said um, it's what? It may not be an attractive 10 year contract offered to us, so it might be a short term deal. I'm just you know, reflecting on what the marketplace is right now, but it, you don't know between now and June what may change. So, you know, having the authorization still seems like a good idea. So, you said it was chaos and it was a monopoly? There's one vendor right now that will provide the service. And that vendor will charge whatever it wants to charge. Almost to the point where I'm, I, I said today to Jane, I'm almost to the point of asking our legislators for help. Because it's a very difficult situation. Uh, and it's, I don't know, it's complicated. But nonetheless, I think the flexibility and the permission idea is, is still reasonable. But, you know, yeah. again, if, if my decision were today, we would not be doing a 10-year contract. By the way, we just off to the side for a sec. We have some residents in town who are very familiar with the situation and are in the business, so to speak, currently in the business. I wonder if it be I'm worth guessing contact. that we may have talked to at least one of them. Okay. It's another one of the, uh, the Beaver Road neighbors. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know that part, so I'll have to, I'll have to check. I thought they were so, all spoken for with different things, but this is a new <laughs> one. There's still other people on the road. <laughs> so continuing on with um, articles that should be removed, we have 8, 11. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Removed. Uh, so I think Ann had suggested something opposite of what you had suggested, if I heard it right. And I thought you were suggesting only certain articles we right. would vote on, whereas I think you're suggesting we'll vote on all of them unless we pull them off. Did I hear you right? I mean, it ends up at the same point, so... Uh, right, so the list I was suggesting was articles to vote on, not to remove. Oh, I'm looking at the back. Let's, all right, hold on. I would look at them differently then. Right. Yes. Right. We're challenging this evening. <laughs> I might ask you to vote on Article 12, which is senior uh, tax reliefs. The that's the next I one. Was, yeah. yeah. So 8, 11, 12, I was going to say 13 also. So there's numerous bylaw ones. Which is hemp and marijuana. So there's, there's from a bylaw one that has been presented to us, there's 13, 14, and 15 are all uh, bylaws. And 16. Yeah. And these have been presented to us. Right. So we may be better off with mine. <laughs> the right we're going. Well. Either way, let's just make sure that whatever list you're taking 
These are the ones it's either in or it's want. out. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. either can, in or out. Can, can we just go through them in numerical order? That's reasonable. And, and um, I think we agreed that what, Bob, the first three? So skip three and four, three and four. for tonight. So that brings us to five. Um, and uh, there is a bill, as you can see. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Bob? There is an unpaid bill, so there is, for Article 5 will be uh, on town meeting. Yeah. Um, I have no problem voting on that. All right, so hold on. Um, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is it, is it the feeling of the board, would people rather vote on more of these or less? Is there mm -hmm. a, a general opinion? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, the consent agenda approach, which is that we vote on everything unless it's pulled in. Seems so I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm questioning that approach. If, okay. if our mission was we should pretty much vote on everything, then I completely agree with your approach. I just want to, before we say that, let's go the other way, which says, should we only vote on ones that we we really kind of want to have a, a strong say on? So that's more of a philosophical discussion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can, I'm, frankly, I can go either way, but I was approaching it from the, rather than vote on everything, maybe we just vote on certain ones where we think it is. It makes a point to town meeting. Um, I, I think that, well, let me ask Bob this. Um, if we don't vote on something like Article 5, does it appear like, uh, does it give the appearance that, that we're agnostic to it or we don't care about it or? I, I honestly don't think it gives any appearance. Doesn't give any appearance anyway. No. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that, I think that's why I was su just suggesting the one was because that was one where I think there could be confusion. Yeah, I, I would agree there is an appearance. On there's an, yeah. there's a, it looks sure. a little bit like yeah. only two members right. have approved this article. Yeah. So my concern was that if we don't say vote on Article 5, it looks like we're not uh, supporting, supporting our staff or... No, I think no. it's fine. Okay. I think if it, if it said select board report, the select board voted, you know, zero, zero, five in opposition, <laughs> to, then, then I think it would look like That would like be five. meaningful, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Then, then I have no preference. I think senior tax relief might also be an exception where it's a petition of the legislature. It feels Sorry. like it's a courtesy. Okay, so do we want to go through these now numerically let's and decide which ones we want to vote on? Yes, let's go through. We'll decide which ones we do want to vote on and if that number becomes large, we can vote at mass. Yes. Perfect. All right. So, Article Three. I to include or not to include? I would include it, but wait till tomorrow night's finish before. Mark, Anne. That's fine. With me. Either way, I, I, I think the decision is made for voting on these, then we should we should do the vast majority, if not all. Yeah, I would be inclined to agree. Uh, okay. Four. Um, same, same, same feeling. Look, I, I don't want to over-influence things here. If you guys feel that it's, it's not important, but we are involved with the budget. So, I mean, I'd be inclined to vote tonight because at this point it's not changing. Well, Bob <laughs> said that it's changing. It, it's yeah. changing. Tomorrow it will change. Oh. Tomorrow it may change. The schools. I missed that part. All right, so let's flag those as sort of separate and move to Article 5. Yeah. And this one we said. This is the outstanding balance. Yeah. So this one we should vote on tonight. Article 5 is outstanding? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's not saying bill. No. Right. tabled. 7 will also be tabled. Uh, okay. I always present it as a call member. No All right. 7 is also tabled. All right. 8, Mark, well, this is one of the ones you had flagged that we should. I think we should. Okay. 
Andy, and I come for the back. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. Nine. This is an increase to the cost of living base for retirement. Uh, did any of us, because I didn't attend the this presentation at FinCom last week? I do not attend. I did not. Back to the I, didn't so I don't feel prepared, really, to. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay no, so apply. nine is a no. I had a question on 10. Um, uh, it, I don't understand it, just to be okay. honest. I read it a number of times and I... I wrote it a number of times and it was still yeah. a little confusing. So, um, typically so the town is not in this business. Typically when yeah. our development happens, the developer hires a monitoring agent forever <coughs> because it's usually a firm. Um, in this case, they hired a smaller firm and unfortunately the monitoring agent passed away. So the, the developer was long gone, out of town, not, not affiliated with the project anymore. It had been sold, it was a condo association. So the town felt it was obliged to step in and fill that gap as the monitoring agent for a period of time. Uh, and then staff came to you asking for you to appoint the monitoring agent, which we did. Yeah. Um, the monitoring agent, when hired by a developer, does not have a three-year contract can have any contract or just an open-ended contract. Um, it's difficult to find monitoring agents. I can assure you that it would be better to offer the monitoring agent a five or a ten-year contract and they'd be more agreeable to then sign up. So we got away with it this time. Um, they understood it was a three-year limit. It was an emergency. Um, but it would be helpful to have the ability to do this longer. And also, this is something I hope you don't ever see again because it's going to be rare. I'd be inclined to support this one. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Eleven. That's the, the waste one. Yeah, I think we should vote on that. Fine with that. Andy, and Yes. Yes. Okay. Twelve is uh, tax, tax relief. So I think we should vote on that definitely. Agreed. Oh yeah. Thirteen, 13 is the marijuana. Ten. My question on that, Bob, or Vanessa, it's okay, um, is this simply, so I read through it a number of times, and it, it appears that this is simply a definition change, and it will affect how, thing, how we do things on the ground. So if we had actually received a presentation by this, um, and yes, it's to make it, it's to keep the town in line with the state, state right. level definitions. Yes. Um, however, if we do nothing, if we do not have town meeting pass this, then we would oblige, be obliged under our zoning uh, to kick CBD out of town because technically it fits in the definition of marijuana and we've banned it. So this is going along with state law. This is also creating a more flexible definition to allow CBD to stay until yeah. someone else determines yes. whether it should is stay or Is that going to be presented? Yeah. Okay. Um, do we want to support? Um. So there are, again, there's 13, 14, 15, 16, there's four articles that are zoning bylaw related that have been put in front of us previously. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and I'm not going to be able to help you on some of these other zoning ones. I know that first one pretty well. Right. Yeah. I remember these presentations. Well, that's good. The mixed use one. Yeah. From One question, I sorry to go back. I, I don't disagree in theory with the idea of um, voting on authorizing the town manager to enter into the contract. Uh, this is Article 11, but just from Mark's comment, oh, there are some residents who are in the business who have some views about this. Is there, is there information that's going to come out at town meeting that would, inf you know, that's no. going to influence? Okay. I don't think that's the case. I, I was more thinking as a resource. Yeah. Okay. Perhaps thank you. this person yeah, could be helpful. All right. Yeah. Thank you. We're looking for any and all resources. Sir. Very good. Yeah. All right. So back to step. So let's take the four zoning bylaw ones together, just 13, 14, 15, and 16. Mm -hmm. um, is this something? So these have been put before us as a board. Yes. 
Um, so the C so so the definition of marijuana, mm -hmm. et cetera, and hemp. The mixed use one. And the C CBD oils. Mm -hmm. um, I, from what I've read, they have little psychoactive properties. They don't have, you know, their psychoactive properties are very small, um, if any. Um, but I'm not on the board of health anymore. I sort of be nice to have them weigh in on this if they have concerns about. It. We've asked them to discuss it if they will, if they have time. We've also had a discussion at our CASA. It's, uh -huh. it's really at the great unknown. Um, there is no scientific data, I'll say. There's concerns, but there's no evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd be inclined to keep us in line with state standards sure. at this point, yeah. since it seems to be a moving target anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Since, since this was being put in front of town re meeting and CPDC's had, had a public hearing that was advertised, we were able to instruct our building inspectors not to enforce the zoning. That's that's the, what you do. Otherwise, we would have had to enforce the zoning on a couple of shops in town that were advertising CBD, and any uh, restaurant or establishment that was even selling CBD as part of the product. It would have been very difficult to enforce, number one. Um, and because there was no scientific evidence, quote unquote, we were a little uncomfortable doing that. So that's why we wanted to have town meeting decide. Yeah. Um, so again, 13, 14, 15, and 16, we have four articles that are zoning bylaw related. Are we supporting or not? Um, I'm going to start calling on people. <laughs> Scrolling. <laughs> And for the zoning articles, so you know, FinCom and the bylaw committee do not typically have reports on these. It's CPDC. Right. But the fin, FinCom would CPDC not vote, but that. yeah. I think that's a better idea. Yeah. Okay. That's the only question. 13 is a little bit of an enforcement issue, though. So we should just think that through, right? Because this is creating a definition for help. And the, there's one key paragraph here. An affirmative vote for this amendment will change the definition of marijuana and add a definition of hemp. It will not change the town's existing regulations for medical marijuana or the town's existing prohibition prohibition of commercial marijuana establishments. So it really is quite specific. Its impact is, relates to the CBD businesses in town and any, any others that might choose to, to do things. Um, and, and to the comment of we don't have scientific data, so um, I think that's exactly what's happening right now with vaping. <laughs> I was just going to say, yet. Yeah. It's exactly the issue. There so is no I'm going to focus us back. We have four articles, four zoning. If we are not comfortable supporting them, then we need to move on. I say take them off. Okay. Andy, Ann, are you comfortable with that? That's fine. Yes. Okay. No, All right, so now we're on to 17. Um, which is the gas leaks piece. I trust that um, Anne and Mark, you have both reviewed it, the document that was circulated. I have. I'm okay. okay. Do you have, so you're comfortable with the background as written? Because this would be one that we would be voting on as a board in order to have it listed as select board as opposed to two members. Yeah, so I, I think that well, two it, things. It wouldn't be, it, it would still be sponsored by you and I. That's how it's on the article. Correct, yes. It, 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 this would just be a vote to say you all are uh, in, 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 in favor of the article or not. Sorry, so, are you saying we're also voting on the background document? No, well, no. The background document just provides the clarity that we have okay. discussed. So it sort of answers some of the questions that have okay. been raised. Mm -hmm. A few meetings ago. And David Zeke is going to do a presentation, I assume, to town meeting. Right. I'm sorry. Right. I'll, I, and then I'll Andy probably and I see, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll I've been to yeah. these multi town initiatives and have learned a lot, so I'll probably say a few, very few brief introductory words. Okay. I, um, I think it should be on. All right, so 17. Anne, are you comfortable yeah. voting? Yeah. Okay. 18. 
I would like to vote on 18. This is to recognize Fractory School. Yes. And I think it would be. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that John would also support this. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. So we have chosen to vote on about half of them. 5, 8, 10, 11, 12, 17, and 18. Yes. And then 3 and 4 are after. Tomorrow. And then 3 and 4 tomorrow. Okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion? Move to, oh, how do we do it? Move to it. Recommend the town meeting. Yes. Recommend, Excuse thank me. you. Two yeah, sentences. so hang on, let me use the words that you've already got here, right? Could you support, uh, support. two sentences about um, Francis Frank Driscoll? The petitioners are have promised to give us something in writing this week okay. in terms of background. Support. To support. Got it. Okay. Okay, so can I make a single motion? Yes. Do you move, have to to move to support. I've got them. Move to support articles 5, 8, 10, 11, 12, 17, and 18. I was just hoping to learn a little bit about Francis Frank School. Oh, about him? Yes. Oh, um, Bob, would you like to would you do the honors? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can do part of the honors. Um, we need John Frank was a, is a firefighter for many years, retired, mm -hmm. then became a part-time veterans agent for many years, mm -hmm. uh, had served uh, in the military mm -hmm. uh, for many years prior to becoming a firefighter, and passed away sadly a, couple, a year or so ago. Okay. Um, some of the residents that lived near him came in and visited the board with different ideas of how to uh, support his memory, mm -hmm. changing the name of the street. Then they fired. Out, then they found out it was named after a retired fire chief. So they did, that was a great idea. Um, and then his, uh, I asked Matt, who's friendly with one of his daughters, uh, and Kev, Kevin Bowmiller as well, to just ask what the two daughters thought, and they are fine with this approach okay. in terms of honoring Frank. Thank you. Um, all right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor? Great. Okay. So next up, we will be discussing um, setting priorities for the select board goals. Um, Bob, do we have the goal? I, I see we go from the warrant to the minutes. Do we have the goals handy somewhere? Uh, let me see if I can find them online. I think they're, they're somewhere online. Yeah. They're on the select board. Yeah, you um, can start minutes while I'm looking. So, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find them as well. Uh, yeah. On the select board page, top. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I have, uh, is it the same document as liaisons? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Does everybody have it handy? It should be behind me. And it's the first one. Liaisons. All right. So the reason we added this one to the agenda is because um, there's been various discussions as far as administratively how we move through. Um, so if you go to the select board page, yeah. go to the very top, and it's the liaisons one, like way on the left. Mm -hmm. it is, it, yes, the second page. And then it's this, yes, yeah, select um, board So we, we've had conversations sort of about how we conduct mini meetings administratively to get through the necessary items on our agenda, and this includes um, Presentations from town staff, presentations from various organizations and groups within the community, um, the items that need to be voted on and approved so that the town manager can move forward with the operations of the town. Um, and then we, in the past, as the board in the past couple of years, have set established numerous subcommittees um, and goals for ourselves. So one of the things we seem to be struggling with as a board is making adequate progress on these goals. So, um, the idea here is to discuss the, a way of prioritizing these, um, pri reprioritizing how we organize our meetings and how much time we allow. 
So it's really meant to be a broad discussion on how we make progress. Um, in previous discussions, we've heard, you know, the previous discussions I've had um, have included things like not having liaison reports in the beginning, which would save us time at the start of the meeting and allow us to have more in-depth conversations. Um, I've heard allocating more time for individual topics. Um, you know, tonight we had 20 minutes allocated for our town accountant. We went to 45. So the only reason we recovered is because we continued a hearing and until a future meeting. So as we think about priorities, goal setting, and meeting efficiency, we need to do better. So with that in mind, the board has various subcommittees. Um, there is the communication subcommittee, which Ann and I are on. There is the capital projects subcommittee, which John and I are on. There's the Housing Trust, which is Mark and Andy, the new EDC, which is also Mark and Andy, and our multi payments, which is Mark and myself. Plus the Ad Hoc Committee for Human Rights. Uh, and we'll sort of leave it there. Um, what are the priorities of the board? Well, of these and of the various topics, I mean, if we, if we look at this handy dandy packet of, of other topics that we need, it's not in this one, um, that we want to discuss and that we want presented, what does that look like? Because we can't have it. Right. So I think that you're talking about when we complete one of these projects, we come to the board and the board needs to discuss them. Yes. And you're suggesting that there's not enough time in our schedule in the next months um, to review all these goals as they come to fruition. Um, I, that's part of it, uh -huh. but more broadly, there's not enough time in the agenda to discuss them all to the extent that we have been discussing things. We talk too much. I think that's one of the issues. <laughs> um, at the risk that you may shoot me, Vanessa. <laughs> Mark? <laughs> um, I wrote up a statement I'd like to read that takes this up multiple levels and has a suggestion on perhaps on how to proceed. So if, if you'll indulge me, it'll only take me a couple minutes. But my, my concern is that as I look at that list, it doesn't really reflect our, it doesn't reflect my priorities as a board member, and I don't think it reflects what we need to get done. Some of the things, yes, but it's not, I, I wouldn't say that we've done our job by getting those things done. So let, me, let me try. So, okay, briefly. Uh -huh. um, I really enjoy working with the board. That said, I think that with multiple liaison responsibilities and how we're structured to discuss and deal with issues, we're not as effective as we can be, nor as expeditious. I think we need to set goals as individuals and as a board to highlight what we'd like to bring to the town in addition to our mandated responsibilities, e.g. licensing activities, etc. Last week I attended a meeting with Bob, sponsored by MARPA, and the State Division of Local Services. I met with... What is MARPA? The Mass Association of... I forget. Regional Planning Agency? Like, oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I didn't actually know. That was right. That was a guess. <laughs> um, I met with the town administrator from Wakefield, Steve Mayo. He told me about a retreat that the town council had recently undertaken and the great opportunity and results that he felt was accomplished from this meeting. I suggest we consider doing this ASAP and before the holidays. As I look at kind of the priorities that I see for myself, for the board, and what I would hope that the board would consider as their priorities as well, not meaning to be complete, but in terms of where I think I can have an impact. Number one, housing and economic development plan. The EDC is a piece of it. High level marketing of the town and dovetailing plans to achieve this one piece at a time, which follows up from the meeting we had last week in the presentation we received. I'm sure downtown and other businesses in town can thrive through business with local residents and visitors. Assure that we can achieve and maintain at least 10% affordable housing that includes housing options for elders, workers, and middle class. Advocate for the arts and the planning process. That's all housing and economic development. Two, aging adult population resources. Again, the MARPA thing was helpful. 
with residents wanting to stay in Reading, we need to explore the best resources to support the community. And I include a community center for mixed generations as an item that should be on this discussion list. Three, work with fellow board members to make government and the select board in particular more expeditious, responsive, and efficient. A way to allow for presentations, questions, and recommendations in a connected manner that maintains momentum, not necessarily the same night, but in short order. Uh, and I think that the select board retreat with Bob and a moderator, which is the other thing that Steve Mayo said would be really helpful. Um, they actually use someone who we can't use because it's a ready way. <laughs> Um, and number four, assure that we can encourage and draw volunteers from the community and cherish them, respect and opportunity. To me, those are four priorities. My guess is some of them may overlap with other members, and some of them, you know, other members may have other things. But I think we need to kind of, that, that list I felt very constrained, and I didn't feel like stuff that I think is priority was getting done. So yes, we're spending too much time on discussions. I think we need to figure out how to set our priorities and how to accomplish it. So I actually agree with all of that. There, there's obviously some that I might change a little bit. Um, and I think the struggle we have as a board is that we don't have time to look at that big picture because of the agenda and how it stands, right? So when I had broached this separately on how to deal with it administratively, um, we cannot allocate an hour to ask questions of the town accountant and allocate an hour to discuss this bigger picture, economic development and housing. We simply can't do it. Um, so from a timeliness perspective, there's a few ways to go about it. We talk less. We have more meetings. We have presentations done, which I think we have already, I, I have been doing for the last several months, but we have an hour allocated for the tax classification, and I asked Bob to have Victor do a 10 minute presentation, which means 50 minutes is being allocated for us to talk in service. So <laughs> I, <laughs> and I'm being blunt here. So, you know, I, I, I've spoken about, about this. Other towns do this in 10 minutes. Right. We are incapable of doing that historically. So I, I agree with you. And I think as far as finding a way to do it, we talk less or we meet more. I don't think a weekend retreat is going to fix this. Well, I think that the discussion of it all together, it will be very helpful. But I do have a specific suggestion as far as tonight's presentations were. If we review the presentations ourselves in advance and ask our questions, pose the questions, not here, but to the presenter. I'll have Victor. So Victor, I saw his presentation. I've already gone back and forth with Victor. I've got all my questions answered about his presentation. I, I'm prepared to do the classification in 10 minutes. Bob, I'm curious. When we ask that the board provide you with questions in advance, how often does every member do that? Um, virtually never. Thank you. Well, maybe that's something we talk about at the retreat. <laughs> I, mean, I think there are ways I mean, to, I, I, to, to I change agree. how we I operate. Think there are, I agree with you. And, I, and, and part of what you're seeing right now is, is frustration on my part. Um, so I agree, and I'm certainly open to that. I mean, I, I'll be honest, not everyone reads the packet in advance of the meeting. Agreed. But I think that that, that is the cause of a lot of time that gets spent at the meeting. Because people haven't read it, and you're reacting to it, and you're asking your questions, a lot of which could have been anticipated in advance. Agreed. I, I so you and I have talked a lot. I'd like to hear from you now. Well, um, so, so I, I began these goals when, when I was chair last year um, in an effort to we had been talking about various things and I wanted us to have a discussion about what were the top five things that we really wanted to attack above and beyond our, our um, regular work. And I still think that's very important for us to do. Have, have so, so 
so that in order to better serve the town, we're actually accomplishing, we have something we can show the town. Yeah, we've done all of this stuff, but in addition, we've done these three or four things this year to help run the town more efficiently or improve part of the town or something like that. Um, so I think we need to have goals and I think we need to have subcommittees that work on those goals. And I think we either, some have moved quickly, some have moved slowly. So um, I think this is a, it's a great time to reassess these goals and decide maybe, maybe we can't tackle this one or that one. Um, these were, as you say, you feel constricted, Mark, of course, because these were goals that were established uh, last year by right. a different board. Right. So, so, and and but not all of them were completed, so they get carried over into this year. And I think it's totally appropriate to discuss, you know, in in ones where we have not made any progress, do we want to make keep that as a goal? Um, so. That's my feeling on this. I think we should go through it, decide where have we just not made progress, let it go, it, it ain't happening, um, and move on. As far as making our meetings run more efficiently, I think Vanessa's been very kind in asking all of our opinions about how the meeting should be run. Um, but. Ultimately, one of the chair's duties under under our policy is to is to um, run the meeting, and so if she thinks that we're going on too long, she has the ability to say, you know, starting to hear repeating themes or and cut us off and say we can't spend this much time. Um, or she can let us go along. Well, it generally isn't well received. It, it isn't, right? but so sometimes... I just want to be fair, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know, but sometimes I think if I'm drolling on, you need to say, you know, thank you, Andy. Uh, I'd like to hear from other members. And, and, and sometimes that's needed, you know? Yes. And uh, I, I think, though, there needs to be a little bit more self-policing. Yes. Um, yeah. But... but is it, you know, some some of us are talkers, <laughs> and and we will try to self police, but ultimately um, we handed that over to you. Um, and I'm A not gavel, you uh, Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean not, not gavel, but just just say throttle me. You know. Okay. Thanks. I'd like to hear from other members. Uh, is and on that note, and keep yeah. it moving. Yes. Uh, I, I do. I do really like Mark's idea of a retreat because I think there, you have a very hard job in trying to get us through all of the necessary business. Um, but the opportunity and a retreat would be a fantastic opportunity to do that kind of high-level goal-setting um, thinking. Um, beyond the business that just has to get done, um, kind of beyond the, the the minimum requirements of the job, but to to kind of have a visioning process for the board and the community. I, I really like that a lot. Um, and one of the many of the things Mark said resonated, but something that I certainly came in tonight thinking about in terms of of a priority is some of the work that Vanessa and I um, have been doing on communications, and I think was also on my mind when I brought up the concept of customer service for a town manager, well, the whole the whole concept of, of of getting back to people and being responsive and making sure that the you know for uh, for us for us elected board members but the people who've um, elected us and those who did whether or not they voted for us the people that we serve um, that we are responsive to them and their concerns and and that. You know, all of these emails that, that come in are, are included in the packet have not only a, a timely response, which I know Mark provides, but a full response and a complete response. Um, and that's certainly something that's of concern to me. And, and the, the people that come in 
and and tell us something in public comment, and then it and then the the loop is never closed there, or, or it may be, but it, it, there's not a consistent way of, of doing so. Um, and I think one of Mark's points tonight was about that that efficient um, response. So one of the things we could consider, um, and we had talked about this previously, is the idea of having. So I think the, the idea of a retreat could, could have a lot of benefits. Um, I think that would need to be the starting point. And then in order to continue the discussion, we could, as a board, choose to structure our meetings differently, which is to say, we meet every other week. Unless we change how we handle ourselves individually as board members and how we contribute to these board meetings, there will never be enough time to then follow up on the, meet the, the brilliant ideas that will come from this retreat, okay? So one way to address that is to have meetings that are dedicated to these follow-up topics, these broader picture goals. Because I'll be honest, sometimes it is hard to shift gears and have these high-level discussions mm -hmm. when we've just been in the nitty-gritty of a legal document, right? It's, it's a painful switch. So. That is an option. Now, with that scenario, we do have to be sensitive to the fact that we need to request space. It needs to be recorded. Staff has to be Why does that have to be not recorded? Need to be recorded. It needs to be broadcast on RCTV. Why? So why was Steve able to do that without doing that? Um, it's your choice. When I say it needs to, RCTV is responsible for doing it unless instructed otherwise by the board. Maybe that's a better explanation. So they instructed Wakefield, we're not having TV. It's still an open public meeting. Sure. And yes. anyone Absolutely. can come. Right, right. Absolutely. And there are minutes. Yep. Um, but it was just not live on TV or recorded on TV for whatever reason. And I think five out of seven board members came, which in my opinion was less than ideal. I, mean, I, I have I no idea what goes on over there, but for you, I think you'd want full attendance. Right. Great. Right. I think also if we talk about not broadcasting, that makes me a little nervous because as we're having, if the, if the idea behind these separate meetings is to have these bigger picture discussions and we're not broadcasting them, and not on RCTV, and not on YouTube, the community won't have access to those discussions. They won't be able to see right. them. So the purpose of the retreat isn't the just retreat to get except. into, yeah. I'm not saying we broadcast the retreat. Oh, sorry. I think that's what we're talking about. No, yeah, sorry. that's that's what we're talking about. No, not the, no. So the retreat, I wouldn't. No, that would be unreasonable. Um, I think any follow-up meetings that happen separately from that. Oh, absolutely. To build on that, those I would want. Right. Which lead us into the logistical mm. challenges. I see. Mm -hmm. well, What's the point of the retreat? I've heard two kind of different topics. One is to set goals or ideals, and one is to run meetings differently. Is it both, or is it separate? I think it's to run the meetings more efficiently. Oh, I, think I think it's it both. I think it's absolutely both. I think it's yeah. to get to the core of what it is that we think we want to accomplish and then to talk about how are we going to get that done given our constraints. Those are two very different discussions to put together. I think one is more what are the goals and right. the second is how, how are we going to get them done. Right. The reality is we're not doing as, as much as we'd like to at these yeah. meetings. So how are we going to change to yeah. The, the, the latter, um, discussing what are the board's goals may be in private, may violate open meeting law. I well, it's still be so meeting, it, still it's be not. open meeting law. Or still be an open meeting. The retreat. It just wouldn't be, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the, the public would still be an open meeting. The public could come. It just wouldn't necessarily be broadcast. Right. Which I think would be fun. I think any follow-on discussions to that wouldn't need to be practiced. Okay. The point is for us to be able to communicate without having legal documents or other things that are that are constraining us yeah. Um, yeah. in a more relaxed mm -hmm. format and environment, mm -hmm. and to to make that the focus of what's going on is that that's the discussion. That's where we want to figure out how are we going to work together as a board. How are we going to make sure we're clear on our goals? How are we going to accomplish our goals? What changes do we need to make to make that happen? So I think I, I like this idea of the retreat, separate, casual, moderated, all that good stuff. I think that from a timeline perspective, finding a weekend when all five board members and Bob and a reporter 
and a model, yes. Uh, Wakefield did it on a Wednesday night, so it's not automatically a weekend, just so you know. Oh, they're finding a day before the holidays. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, Wakefield it's planned this for some time. Ideally, good. maybe you'd like to have the discussion as soon as possible, but practically October through January is the busiest time for a lot of functions of government. We'll, and then we, and then we we'll, hit the we'll, we'll do what you can. You know, right. we'll do what and we, we do can. Right. 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 Um, so I, I don't, I don't want to. I want to be careful here because I, I like the idea and I, and I don't want to poo poo it. I just, I'm a little sensitive to the timeline that we're trying to operate on. And you talked about potentially adding a Tuesday before year end. What if we did that? And its purpose was the retreat. We actually have one. Yeah. Bob, right? The first uh, Tuesday of December is, has got other agenda items, but I, maybe we could add more. I, I haven't looked at it. So it is not a budget meeting. It's December 3rd, correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, licenses and liquor licenses, two hearings, very short. Facilities Department presentation on energy improvements um, and HR on employee attraction and retention. Uh, so it's, it's possible that both of those could be moved to the budget presentations, but they're not going to be a, an hour long or a 45 minute long discussion. So it's your choice. So Bob, I have here meetings in my calendar maybe out of date, but I have meeting for us December 3rd, 4th, 10th, and 11th. Correct. Okay. Um, but the 4th, 10th, and 11th are all the budgets. Correct. Is there a reason why we're not meeting on the, the week of the 17th? I'd have to look at a calendar. It just gets close to the holidays. It is, I mean, it is. It's, it's the. It's, it's exactly a week before Christmas. Um, Past attendance of the board tends to dwindle as we get close to holidays. Okay. Um, so, but it sounds like the, the third already has agenda items that are administrative in nature that we need to tackle. So. It's it's the board's choice. There's no magic about them happening that night, but it seemed sensible to do it before the budget presentations, but it's your choice. Um, they could happen in January. There's no magic about that. So the only thing that, that gives me pause here is that John's not part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and I would very much like to hear his take on this before we decide to take a course of action. John, when you're watching this, <laughs> <laughs> he's already at your house. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you might, as I'm looking at your next meeting on the 29th, if tax classification goes faster, um, we have, I don't think we have to advertise a hearing for the PTTF stuff, so that'll change. Okay. Um, I'm sure you can get an hour on that agenda to continue this discussion with John in the room at least. But the safety stuff, we're going to talk about Haverhill Street. Uh, there's no actual, to my knowledge, there's no actual votes you need to take on safety improvements. We're going to give you an update on Haverhill Street and have a very complicated discussion on downtown parking that I'll simplify by just saying we want to delete the current rules and start all over. I've had this discussion with Vanessa. So we don't really have to take a lot of time to do that other than to show you how horrible it is now. So I am pretty comfortable that you can squeeze at least an hour into that night without a lot of trouble. As long as uh, classification doesn't go for 90 minutes. Can I respectfully ask my fellow members to see if we can knock things out in advance with Victor? Just answer any questions that we already know we have. Get them done. I, I do like that. And, and I'm guilty of doing things last minute as Caitlin can attest to. Um, but I need to change my behavior, and I think if we all did that ahead of time, it's hard. You get it Thursday, and your natural reaction is um, Sunday nights or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday is the right time to get it done. I um, say personally, but but if we if you know if we could try to do it earlier and send out questions, have our questions answered. I did that. Uh, I sent some questions to Bob on on the um, the policy changes to licensing and then of course we didn't discuss them tonight but mm -hmm. um, right as you get get those questions answered before 
she would come to the meeting. All right. We might be able to go through it faster. I'll hold you all to that. So, as far as the tax, so so looking forward to the October 29th meeting, so that we can include John, Bob. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see the new EDC here with no time allocated to it. Will um, you be yeah, which one are you looking at? Because I mentioned to Mark and Andy that I've actually moved that to November, but not in time for your packet. They wanted to do it in November. Okay, great. Perfect. So All right, the so onboarding that's manual could probably go to any night, respectfully. Uh, tax classification and safety improvements are two agenda items that should get discussed. No, we can keep those there. And I'd, I'd wrap the downtown parking and the depot stickers under this safety improvements. Okay. So, so that's an hour and a half. All of those require staff input, correct? Yes. Okay. So why don't we front load the meeting with those. Okay. And once we get through the depot parking, we will shift to having this conversation essentially again with John present. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, and I'm sorry, by the way, I should have mentioned this during my report. Um, we do finally have an applicant for the school committee, so oh, there wonderful. will be a reason to meet. I, we still can't find a location. Um, John is tasked with finding it because the library didn't have one, and we have trick-or-treaters in this building, so you won't get near it. <laughs> so it's going okay. to be out of school to be announced. Again, 5.30 next Wednesday is the likely time. Okay. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Great. The building our community event at this, RPL is canceled. This Thursday night is canceled, canceled. correct. Okay. All right, so we've tackled, so we sort of morphed from goal setting priorities to a future agenda. So uh, now we move on to minutes. Can I ask a question? Because this, this was asked in the past. Um, do you want to discuss at some point whether you want to have subcommittees as a legal structure as opposed to one member that doesn't have to post meetings? So my inclination is, so I would recommend that we leave the existing subcommittees that we've created, mm -hmm. but that moving forward as we identify projects that one person take the lead, they can do fact gathering from other members, being very careful not to deliberate, and then that one individual can then present to the full board. Um, we seem to be more productive when we take this approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. Um, but let's, I would suggest leaving the existing subcommittees because I, it feels disingenuous to. Yeah, but I think we, we're going to discuss the subcommittees with John and see if they are still. If we want to keep them as the goals of this board. You yes, we can. We can tackle that for the 29th. Right, 29th. Yeah. All right. So, minutes. Um, now, I had some, Andy had some, they should all be in this packet from tonight. I had um, um, So, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, Andy, the 625, I'm going to take these one at a time. The 625 minutes weren't in this packet. No, they were in a previous. They were, no. I believe we already... Okay. Voted on. Maybe this. it was just on the same email, so I was okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can so we seven. confirm whether those minutes were the six twenty-five minutes were already voted on? Yeah, I can go back and look. Okay. I'll uh, check and leave. Yeah, you can, see if you can you check live. Okay. They were voted on. Yeah, I'll see if I can. So let's find. let's table the six and Andy six twenty-five minutes while we verify whether or not those were already approved, mm -hmm. and we'll move to the seven nine minutes. All right. No. My recollection, sorry, my recollection is that Andy and Caitlin were going to go back and watch the video. I think that was the 7-9 one. The 7-9 one, right. Yeah. Yeah. So did you end up coming up with, like, is that, are these updated from after? Nope, so these were Andy's original, original. edits okay. um, that he wanted to change, and I wanted to go back and uh -huh. make sure okay. something was right. So I'm fine with everything that he wrote except for one sentence uh -huh. um, that I, I uh, did not run the video, so I did yeah. not want it in there. But um, so it was under bullet point number two, mm -hmm. and um, in his rewrite, where it says town council stated that we have to have a hearing to remove them, that was the only thing that I never heard specifically get stated at that. 
with everything else, I'm fine. At the with, in, in the at video. that meeting, it was said because I know you were stating prior meeting. I don't know if you said at the prior meeting. That's but this that's quite possible. Specific meeting, it was not just that one sentence was. Um, I would take it. That's that's fine with me. I, okay. I tried to look through the video and make it as accurate as possible, but, but let's move on. Okay, so but would you take out then the following sentence? Cause no, I still think it makes sense with that following it. sentence. I just think the the statement about the hearing to remove them, because they're still talking about a charter challenge. Okay. No? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Because the first, she's. I agree with Caitlin. The second sentence talks about the charter challenge, and then. Um, so as a point of clarification, yeah. first sentence, Mr. Friedman signed a consistent statement with similar situation okay. two years ago. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. In yep. September 2017, yep, people heard it. That one's fine. At the time, the select board decided to stick fine. with appointments. So the, the sentence we are removing is the town council stated. Yeah. Had, okay. Yes. And then the one that follows that. That's fine. Is also fine. Yeah. Okay. But I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that as well. Okay. So, and we're all fine with number one. Yes. Great. All right. Um, I ha also had some edits to this particular meeting. Mine are on page seven of tonight's packet. Um, I copied the section so that you have a point of reference. So it's the one, two, three, fourth paragraph down. I would suggest replacing with the sentence above it. Item number one. I'm fine with that. Are you fine with that? Yeah, I think it's important. Okay. 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 So that one. Any other edits for seven nine? And did you have edits? For seven, Not for seven, nine. Okay, I see yours for 827. All right. So seven, nine is done. Can we have a motion? Oh, Bob. Um, well, I, I, if, if you're going to go one at a time, I'll wait. I just found minutes. Oh, I wanted you to see. Yeah, let's, let's okay. do them one at a yeah. time. Okay. And they okay. say final on them, which means I have to go in and change that. Yep. Okay. okay. Move to accept the minutes of seven, nine, 2019 as modified. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Great. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, next up, we have August 6th. August 6th. I didn't receive any written messages. I was not present for that meeting, um, so I have no edits. Did anybody else have edits that were sent in advance? Okay, great. Uh, just as for information, because I was not present, I will abstain from this one. Okay. Do, I, do we have a motion? Move to accept the minutes of 8-6-2019 as written. Second. All second. All those in favor? So three, zero, one. Yeah, force of habit. Uh, okay. All right, now to the meeting minutes for eight for August 27th. Um, I also had edits for this one. Did they not make it into the packet? Yeah, they, they are. are. Oh, yeah. oh, I get it. Okay. Yep, they're in order. I think I can I follow. Really order the minutes. Yep. All right, so, Anne, you had some edits. Yeah, and one of my edits offers an alternative correction to yours. Okay. Um, I had two suggestions that were um, or two suggestions that were relative to the liquor uh, violation, uh, and then uh -huh. one that was relative to the police chief hiring process. So I am fine with 
uh, all three of yours. And so for Anne's first one regarding the police chief process, mm -hmm. let's use that um, in lieu of my number two. Okay. Yep. Um, and I'm fine with your two and three. Any other? No? Okay. Um, for on page nine of this document, my number one. Um, did I do those backwards? That's what you. No, that was it's it's there's oh wait is there a redundancy? The yeah, there is it's redundant. All right, so I would suggest so my number one. Oh, that's space. Um, so my number one still stands. Yeah. Is everyone comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other edits to the eight? Oh, I had other edits. Eight. Sorry. Last year. Can I ask a question on your number one? Um, is the number one thing you're replacing or what you're adding? I just wasn't clear. Um, that whole paragraph should yeah. replace that whole paragraph. The first sent. The first sent part. Uh, on page nine is what you're adding? Yes. Um, or changing. So item number one will replace the sentence indicated. Yeah. So is is the correction, is, should that be noting, not nothing? That, yeah, that's what I, I'm written yeah, That's, that's yeah, the change, change right? Yeah. Um, no. Yes, the rest of it is all the same. It's just I couldn't, yeah, it's a PDF, so I couldn't copy and paste it. Yeah, just she, has a, she has a period after task and then starts mm -hmm. another sentence. Um, all right, and then on the last page, Motion to accept the minutes of 827 2019 as amended. Do we have a second? Wait, for 824 or 827? 827. Okay. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Oh, 827. Got it. I got it. And 9. Sorry. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. September 10th. Hmm. I didn't have any edits for this. Nor did I. Okay. Anybody else? Nope. Great. Motion. Motion to accept the minutes of 9 10 2019 as written. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Great. Uh, September 24th. Uh, these are the ones Andy circulated in advance, so if you can take yeah. a look at what Very wrote. short advance. So, uh, Andy, to clarify, is, are the sections that are underlined the edits? It, it, it highlights the reason for the edit. For an example, the first one, ZBA to prove uh, it, it, it replaces um, the original sentence said that um, they were going to approve them, the Tarrant Lane project at the next meeting. But that's what I first stated and then corrected myself. It will be the meeting after the next, which is October 9th. The original, the original. I don't, I don't know what, I can't remember what you said in the meeting. It's the board of, it's called the board of appeals. You corrected it to say board. You board of ass assessors. Board that, of that was assessors. that was a problem with doing this last minute. It's board of appeals. Okay. You're right. I apologize. It's not the ZBA. 
Right. It's the Board of Appeals. Yeah. So, so friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. Okay. And then, and and then I did say October 9th, not their next meeting. At the, I mean, it's not that big, big of a deal now, but it's it was incorrect. Um, and and um, but I can see how Caitlin um, thought that because that was the first thing I said. Okay. So the only, so the, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with okay. the one. The third one. Did you rewatch the video? Because I don't remember this. Uh, yes. Yes. The, he replace. Did. He would like to attend. Yeah. Okay. I specifically Great. asked the board, right. and then people. I think Mark slowly nodded his head, and another slowly nodded and said, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the slow nod approval. Yeah. The after ten o'clock nod. I promise not to do any big deals or any. I went today actually, and I did not make any deals. Good point. I'm quiet. It is ten thirty. <laughs> it is. I'm fine with all of these, including the friendly amendment. Do you have anybody else? Should it be Mr. Doxer? I don't know. Doxer explained. Yes, it should sure. be Mr. Um, and have you, can you send this please as a Word document to Caitlin so she doesn't have to rewrite us? She it. has it. Okay. Yeah. Right, do we have a motion? Yes, but hang on, I gotta get the date correctly. Move to accept the minutes of 9-24-2019 as amended. Our second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the motion to adjourn. Mark. You're going to really hate I'm me again. <laughs> So <laughs> you're the chair. <laughs> yeah, you can stop me. But didn't, didn't we say right at the beginning of the meeting that we wanted to discuss the issues related to the rec committee? Uh, one mm -hmm. specific to mm -hmm. John's note and any other things that were on there. I don't know that we can actually vote to take that because it wasn't. We can't. Public, um, but I'm just concerned that there are a number of items that are on the agenda, and it sounds like we're, we're not communication path maybe isn't as good as it could be. So uh, that's fine. I'm willing to take this up. Um, <clears throat> I think that my recommendation would be, Andy and I are both liaisons. If you have concerns, you send it to one of us. Okay. Um, and one of us attends, or both of us can attend the next recreation meeting. Um, or reach out, and actually maybe reach out to the chair instead in advance. So if these have come up, would you consider talking about them if you're and we can certainly follow up on John's comments because they're public. Yeah. Yep. Um, that way it puts okay. it as a request. It puts it squarely in their court, which is where it does need to be um, as far as how we proceed. Because there may very well be priorities that we have that are separate from what yeah. they have. And we don't know what those are at this point. Yep. The only comment would be they, they seem to be landing on our lap. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to address that. Okay. Yeah, we, we we can have that dis discussion with them, and then I would want to try carefully there. Yeah, just throwing that out there. I understand. I just think it, it it's a discussion that should take place. I mean, it's soon. If we're being asked to do things we can't do, that's not very helpful. On the other hand, if the it's a, a group that reports to us, I would imagine we should be able to have some influence at least in the discussions. Let's tread carefully there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So noted. From, but from, um, a, from a, a, the perspective of getting back to people, people are coming to us with concerns. concerns. We need to be able to respond to them. Well, just so you're all aware, because you wouldn't actually know this, the school committee received the same memo. They've not had a meeting since, so okay. they've not addressed it. Uh, so if did the you have we know, did the concerns know. specifically that you'd like to have us discuss with recreation or ask them to put on their future next agenda send it to either Andy or myself but not both of us please um, okay. and I'll reach out to John and let him know that he can do that as well okay. and, and we'll have John's 
how we have John's letter. And you and I can act on that, or you know, go have a discussion with. Him, right? But but I agree. Tread carefully. This yes. is. Okay. Now we're motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor?